Tonight I'm going to spend some time talking to you about people in history who God put his anointing upon, and when he put his anointing upon them, the word of God which was heard, which was spoken by God and was heard and studied by many men, suddenly became active and revelatory living in the sight of those whom God had anointed. Out of time, men stepped up and began to show everyone on planet Earth that there was a realm that we were able and empowered to live in if we were willing to have a relationship with the living God. They weren't exceptions. They were simply men who were willing to respond to the invitation of a relationship and at the time receive a special anointing from heaven in order for the Word of God to be more than just understood and memorized. I know many people, I know many people in church today, they are filled with the Word. They know a lot of the Word, but the Word has never been mixed with faith by the anointing of the Holy Ghost to be living and to be visual and to have the impact of the great things that God has purposed for each man to have in their life. Because God began to take you, the Holy Ghost, your mentor, your teacher. He began to take you into the impossible realms of living a life in the spirit, living a life in the supernatural, living a life in the realms of heaven, in the realms of God's divine grace. And you became overwhelmed by the fear of it all. You became overwhelmed by the impossibility of it all. You became overwhelmed because none of the things that you learn to trust in will work in that realm. None of the things that you usually retreat to and hide yourself in suddenly is irrelevant in that realm anymore. Suddenly you, kind, you come into a place of complete and total abandonment now to trust in God, to walk upon the water, to command the wind and the waves, to begin to move in a whole new different dimension of laws, the laws of the Spirit, a whole new different order of the rulings of God. God. Hallelujah. But I'm here to tell you tonight in this place that there are those who are going to step into this expression of divine power and authority because they've just been so hungry and thirsty. It did not matter what they had to go through, what tribulation, what trial, what sorting, what opposition, what contrary works. They, they passionately pursued this thing which they could not live without. It's called the anointing. And Father has given to everyone an anointing to be sons of God, to be children of God. We've all received an anointing that we may know him. And that is a radical, radical, radical thing. To hear John talk about the new birth anointing as uh, being an anointing of the Holy Ghost that causes us to know all things. And literally, it is an anointing that causes us to know everything about God so that we might understand how to be moved by the Spirit, how to walk in a realm unseen, how to, how to move with that which no man in a human realm and a human intellect can even begin to function in. <laughs> Hallelujah. But the Spirit of the living God's come to teach us the Spirit of the living God's come to show us. But for most people, that's not even relevant. It's not even, it's not even something that is of value. It's something that is mystical. It's something that is, uh, that is distant from them, aloof from them. And, and they find themselves in their struggle and in their, and in their human ability and in the conflict of their doubts and uncertainties trying to lay hold on that which can only be received as a free gift. Ha, <laughs> ha, a What a dilemma. When people get or take a wrong turn of religion and try to have that which is only freely received. To try to obtain that which can only be had because it's accepted, it's received. And then walked in and lived out with total abandonment. The other night, the Spirit of the Lord began to speak to me about the Declaration of Freedom or the Declaration of Independence or the Declaration of Liberty. The Declaration of Freedom being absolutely nothing. A flash in the pan, an event, an exciting night, an emotional experience. Unless there is a code that ensures its liberties. Somebody can 
cite the Declaration of Independence, but if there's not a constitution that describes a code by which those liberties or freedoms are retained, it is easily overthrown and capitulated by those who thought they had the authority of it. God's people need to learn to be consecrated to one thing, His holiness. God's people under need to understand that holiness is a, cons a consecration, absolute surrender to live by the Word of God, to live by His Word. And God's Word is all about doing. See, the gospel was preached to Israel as well, but didn't profit them because all they did was memorize the doctrines and memorize the words. And all they could put all the string, all the words together, and all they could quote them, and all they could give a good speech and accounting for themselves that they had been in Sunday school, that they had learned their lessons, that they understood the boundaries of their inheritance and the opportunities that God had afforded them. But it was never mixed with faith in them to produce the outworking of it. Today we find ourselves similarly in this place. We have, we have this day a remnant or those, as it were, standing here in this place, like in Judah, still serving God, over against those who have basically given themselves over to every kind of uh, uh, and every every kind and form of of lust that they can actually have in the context, as it were, of the ministry. And that's a little bit difficult to explain tonight, and I'm not going to go into it. But what happens is God raises up a champion, somebody who's willing to be a champion for men who's a champion of heaven, who calls the fire of God down upon the place. Hallelujah. Who calls the fire of his presence to burn around the regions of their influence. And God wants to make you that champion. God wants to make you a champion in the realms of men. He wants to make you a champion in the kingdom of God that you can bring to those that are around you and to those of your generation a great liberty that shines in the brightness of the light of his countenance and the glory of the face of Jesus Christ. Myself, I'm set on being such a person. I'm set on having such an influence. I'm not going to stop by any of the expressions of men. I don't need somebody to come along beside me and tell me who I am. Thus, I'm not affected by all the things that people say about me that try to describe who I am not. It's meaningless to me. My, who I am has been defined by me in the same way of who you are should have been defined by you. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> who I am is defined by me, to me, by the Lord, the life and ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the same should have been defined to you concerning who you are. And somehow you don't recognize that there is a great war and conflict waging against you to try to stop that from being a manifested living reality in your life, then I tell you, wake up in Jesus' name. Come out of your sleep and out of your slumber so that you might be vigilant, so that you might be sober, so that you might take unto yourself the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to stand in the evil day, that you may be able to stand against all the wiles of the enemy that is trying its best to keep anybody in this earth from stepping into the realm of divine glory, which God has given an opportunity in every generation for those who are willing to hear, to experience, to have, to lay hold on, to lay and hold on an eternal life. And eternal life is only described by the life of God. Hallelujah. An eternal life that is only described by the life of the Spirit. Many men have made wrong decisions because they reasoned out the situation. Rather than getting upon their face to hear the voice of God, to hear the mind of Christ, to hear the expression of the Holy Spirit, say, stand fast. Stand fast. I've given you a place of firm footing. I've given you a place where you can stand a reality that expresses my divine will. And if you will not be moved, then I will accomplish in your life everything that I've ever described that any man could have. 
Today, right now, we are at a precipice. We are at a crossroads. We are at a moment that men are making decisions of whether they're going to live the life of, of religious mediocrity or step into the great exploits of God. For I tell you, I can show you many signs of the times that these are indeed the last days that Daniel spoke of when he said, days that know their God in the last days shall do great exploits. I can define for you that these are the days of those manifested sons of God that will rise up in divine glory. I'm telling you, something's going to be seen that is wonderful in the millennial reign of Christ but I'm telling you it will happen in these days as well for those who believe God it's a total abandonment of your life it is a total abandonment of your life without a total abandonment Satan will have an ability to access you and stop you that's why it must be a total abandonment of your life it must be a total abandonment of your own reasoning must be a total abandonment of your own intellect and of your own understanding. For there's no possible way for you to be strong in the strength of the Lord and the power of His might to stand against the wind of His influence, the wind of His circumstance, the wind of His demonic deception. They will take every man out who holds on even to just a part of their life. God has given us a great opportunity, and that is to live in the place of being His ambassadors, to be in the place where we stand executing the will of the Father, commanding it to be so. You know, if James said anything great, he said this. He said, the fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. In James chapter 5 and verse 16. And then he emphasized it, saying Elijah was a man subject to the same kind of human frailties, human concerns. He had to wake up in the morning having to deal with the same kind of issues about food and clothing and had to deal with the same kind of issues about housing and all the other human concerns. But he did not regard himself within the framework of who he was as a Tishbite but was willing to receive fully that commission that God had given him when he anointed him with divine power. And this is how Elijah prayed. Here's how he prayed. First Kings chapter 17, 1. Here's how he prayed. It shall not rain except by my word. That's how he prayed. He stood in a place of commanding that which God had willed. There's no possible way for you and I to ever come to such a faith and such a boldness and such an expression of the divine will of the Father so that His will will be done in this earth as it is in heaven until you are resolved that you no longer live. And I tell you, I believe it's a denying of the self, but I can also help you understand it. Maybe I need to put it up another notch for you that it is a dying because I'm going to tell you, if you recognize what you're up against, maybe you're willing to pay the price because it's going to run in conflict with everything that you feel and everything that you've learned to trust in and everything that you're comfortable with. Because it's a whole other realm of living. It's a whole other sense realm. Hey, you know, sight is a beautiful gift. Physical sight is a beautiful gift. But I tell you, spiritual sight is a far greater gift. Hallelujah. To be able to see. <laughs> and I tell you, you are learned, you train to see by the Word of God. I watch as many people try to climb up some other way. I watch as many people try to learn how to do that which you can only come into under divine unction, under divine mandate, under a divine compulsion, under an overwhelming... Oh, overwhelming. Over, overwhelming. Overwhelming. Laying hold of, upon our spirit and soul and body and mind by the Holy Spirit. People aren't willing to pay the price of going to their knees and crying out to God and learning how to pray. See, relationship demands reciprocation. It demands it. People say they have a relationship, but they don't have a reciprocation. A relationship means you say something, and the person you're talking to answers back. You do something, and they do something. I tell you, God chose you and ordained you to have a relationship that's reciprocated, that whatever you ask the Father, He will do it, so that, he, so that Jesus may be glorified in the Father, that Father may be glorified in the Son. 
so that you and I may be witnesses. God gave us a special anointing of divine authority where the Holy Spirit's not only with us, overshadowing us. Hallelujah. Peter stepped into such a divine glory that the anointing overshadowed him. It wasn't just a shadow. It's the same word used as overshadow in any encounter with God in Old Testament and New Testament. And the Spirit of the Lord shall overshadow you and the holy thing that shall be conceived on the inside of you. God, the Holy Ghost, overshadowed Peter. So they brought the people into the streets because even his overshadowing. Makata, you say. Hallelujah. <laughs> when I get near you, if I get near you, I've overshadowed you. If I get near you, I've overshadowed you. The overshadowing in his life, the Holy Ghost was not only on him, that was just the effect of the Holy Ghost being on him, with him, alongside him. Somebody said, well, the Old Testament, the Holy Ghost was on us. They sit around and intellectualize God, never understand the flowing forth of the presence and the beauty and the splendor and majesty of in their own lives. They just want to intellectualize God, try to comprehend them within the intellectual realm. And they exercise themselves their whole lives for that and to that and never bear forth the fruit which God demands. There's a change, a shift going on for you in this place here. Because I brought forth the word of life for you tonight. I've, I've brought forth the word of liberation. I've brought the word of stepping forward, moving up. I've brought the word that brings forth the fire. I've brought the word that brings forth the annunciation of those things which nobody could otherwise pronounce without the Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. My God, Yashika. Hallelujah. God's got training camps, and this is one of them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you right now, I don't have a sense of superiority. I have a sense of union with Jesus Christ. I, I have, I have, I'm overwhelmed with the humility that God has brought, that he has placed me, brought into my life, that he's placed me in a position to ultimately execute his will in the earth. And I want you to feel the same way about yourself. And I want you to understand there's a fire for you to live in. There's a life for you to gain. There is a life for you to deny. That's the one of self. The life for you to gain is only going to be fully Realize as you deny yourself and you take up your cross just like Jesus did and his cross is described in this that he did not live for his own life he did not live to do his own will but to do only the will of the Father it was his life poured out for the purposes of divine uh, of the divine will and plan of God it was his life poured out so that souls might be redeemed I was with the uh, son-in-law Billy Graham the other day and he was describing to us how the Billy he's old now he's about ready to make his transition into heaven and uh, you know, it's Brother Billy. You know, I don't want to be, he, I, I praise God for who he is. And he says he doesn't really wake up or he doesn't really respond to anything unless you tell him somebody got saved. And as soon as you tell him someone's saved, he brightens up and says, thank you, Lord Jesus. What is that? It's a description of what motivated him, that what brought forth the actions in his life so that mighty deeds might be made manifest through his life. He was so hooked up with that which is the heart of the Father, seeing him the lost brought into the kingdom. My, 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 my. Think about it, dear people, when all of a sudden the things that are so important to the Father that have been revealed from heaven become important to us and we begin to realize the power and the authority of it. I don't, you listen, the word is important and you need to get the word in you, but you're supposed to be getting the word in you so that you understand what you're supposed to do and what you're not supposed to do, how you're supposed to stand fast in this life of, con of consecration. See, consecration isn't about all the things that people have made it to be. Consecration is about you deciding that you're only going to live the life of Jesus from this day forward. Holiness is not about all the things that people have described it to be. It's completely given over to live your life out under the divine will and plan of Almighty God. To do those things which Father has demanded of us to do. Father raises up champions. Father raises up champions to, to turn the hearts of the people. To turn the hearts of nations. And I want to begin now. I, I, I want to just try to recap this this morning fortunately we can put it up for you on YouTube because I believe it is the word that God is speaking by his spirit right now and anybody who will hear uh, will be allowed to go further on in these things that God has purposed for us to do in these last days you stand at the point of decision in your life All God has given an invitation to everyone you have to voluntarily opt out 
<laughs> as much as you voluntarily say, yes, I received the invitation. I will take the free gift. I will begin to move in it. I'm going to sign up to be every day mentored by the Holy Spirit so that I might learn how to step by step walk in this divine glory and power and faith. I will not back up. I will not back down. I will not be intimidated. I go after raising the dead. I go after opening up the eyes of the blind. I go after casting out devils. I go after commanding the wind and the waves. I go after saying moon stand still and Agilon Gibeon don't move. I mean sun don't move and Gibeon. I go after saying it shall not rain except by my word. I go after these mighty exploits in God. For this is how God ultimately brings a sovereign moving of his power in the earth. A friend of mine is going around right now teaching, I am remnant, and I am, and we are. And he described it in such a way, Pat described it in such a way, he said a remnant is the rag that God uses to clean up the mess. <laughs> I, I, I kind of sanctified it a little bit better and said it's the cloth that Father uses to clean up. The, it's the cloth. See, the remnant was the piece that didn't fit in to the beauty and the splendor of the robes that was being designed <laughs> for, the, for the, the elite to wear. It was the piece that just was left over. <laughs> it was that which no, it was not fit for the use of men. That was fit for God. Hallelujah. That's me. Hallelujah. I am remnant. I'm in Kasatea. Hallelujah. God's got a remnant. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. And you know, James is describing what fervent prayer is and describing a fervent prayer of a righteous man and calling the church to such boldness of faith, to such a prayer of faith. When he's describing it in the context of Elijah's bold prayer, it shall not rain except by my word. You can notice that Joshua didn't get down on his knees and say, oh God, I pray in Jesus' name. Or he didn't get down on his knees and say, oh God, hear me now and cause the moon to stand still in the sun so that it doesn't move so I can get the work that you've given me to do done. Notice that actually he was about doing the work that God had given him to do, though. A lot of people want to have the moon standing still and the sun doing what they say and they doing nothing. So you got to get moving. Hallelujah. I told you show this morning. I said, you know, when you came from Japan, there looked like there was no provision. There looked like that there, there was no means to take care of you really when you got here. But they came anyways. And God's been taking very good care of them better than they could have planned out for themselves or done for themselves. I said, use it. It's a rule for the rest of your life. That's what God does. If you're willing to go, he'll meet you there. Ha! Hallelujah. Ha, hallelujah. If you're willing to go, God will meet you there. Hallelujah. No, a lot of people got to have the money in the bank. They got to have a well thought out plan. They got to execute some kind of process that they thought through. Don't work that way. God leads you one step at a time. He'll go tell you to go someplace and won't tell you where you're going. How's that for instructions? How's that for full disclosure? Follow me. Where are we going? I'm not telling you. My biggest weakness is I've been trying to convince people of where God was going to take them and I overstepped my limit of authority. I saw in God where they were supposed to go. I saw what was hindering them and holding them back. I tried to, with exclamation marks to tell them and I violated what God wants to only reveal and you to, through you uh, uh, by relationship, a discovery process that's only possible when you get hungry and get thirsty. Hallelujah. Praise God, I've learned it. My goodness, you know, I can continue. I can go ahead and move on and just lift, lift up my voice and call out. Watch what God's going to do. Watch what God's going to do. Watch what God's going to do. I mean, I'm telling you right now, the mighty men that God has raised up in this earth has come to me and said, Mark, we're coming to stand alongside of you. We covenant with you. We're going we're gonna to knock that thing down. We're going to knock it down. I've been standing, I've been standing over here, I've been standing over here screaming at the mountain, Grace, 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 and I haven't stopped for more than 30 years, Grace! And I'll continue to shout till it's been made a plain. There won't be three shouts coming out of my mouth. And it's praise, praise God when Father sees in anybody's life a, a persistence, a, a, a tenacity, a passion, a fervency, a faithfulness. 
I'm telling you right now, he's going to bring all heaven alongside you, make sure the job gets done. And nobody who wants to be in is going to be left out. And nobody who wants to do it all is going to have anything less. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> but you could go through the fire. You go through the fire. Yeah, you go through the fire. And if you hang on to anything of self-will and anything of own, your own personal ambitions and ideas, you'd be taken out. You'd be taken out. But good the news is God give you a chance. He's the God of the second chance, third chance, 10,000th chance, 449 chances in a day, times 365, times however many years you live. That's a whole lot of chances. Hallelujah. If you just take one year of chances, my God, that's a lot of chances, huh? 365 times 490? Huh? That's a big number. I'm telling you, my goodness, people, I'm certain that you can make this. I'm certain that you can do this. I'm certain that God has given you great provision. I'm certain that God has made you more than able. I'm certain that God has provided all that you have need of according to his riches and glory. And But for heaven's sake, don't reduce that to a level of monetizing it. He's given us the riches of heaven, the Holy Ghost himself to come lead us and guide us, be our teacher, instructor, our mentor. Somebody said, I want you to disciple me. Hey, man, you don't need me. You got the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Hallelujah. There are certain things I, as a pastor, am allowed to do, and then there are limitations that God draws. The rest, God, you've got to have developed in your life through a personal relationship where you learn how to respond to his voice. And you learn that he responds to your voice. Hallelujah. You learn such great submission. You learn such great humility. You learn brokenness. You learn about the concept of divine authority. You never live in the familiarity you devoted to the sacred. Hallelujah. Familiarity will breed contempt. For familiarity is a synonym with common. And many people will take the sacred things of God that Father has anointed that he's jealous over and they will take it and make it familiar. Oh, don't do that because then all of a sudden you violate things in the spirit and your life goes on hold until you learn how to honor God. Hallelujah. And before honor, there's humility. You're going to have to go through some troublesome, troublesome times to realize you weren't so smart after all. You didn't have it all put together. You was listening to the wrong voice. That The reasoning of your mind was not the mind of Christ. It was not the voice of the Holy Ghost trying to lead you to that next step of complete abandonment to the will of the Father. I mean, good namaste to you. Oh, my Elijah's been on an amazing ride. He's been on an amazing ride, I'm telling you. Wow, for 2,600 years, he's been alive. He's the oldest man outside of Enoch who's been alive for more than 5,000 years. <laughs> Standing in the presence of the living God, ready to come back to finish up their ministry. You talk about a remnant. You talk about a rag to clean up the mess. You talk about a voice of the prophetic. You talk about authority with God to speak, and God answers before, making it visible before all men. Now listen to this. James makes this emphasis in James chapter 5, verses 16 and 17, so that he might bring us back to the statement of verse 7. He said, Dearly beloved, have patience under the coming of the Lord Jesus for the husbandman has long patience. He's waiting. He's waiting for the precious fruit of the earth. The precious fruit of the earth is only defined and described in those who know how to say, it will not rain till I say so. The precious fruit of the earth is only described by what God's called you and ordained you, what he chose you to be. Let me take the pressure off. He chose it. It's his, it's his idea. It's his plan. It's not something that you've got to live up to. It's not something you've got to earn or convince God to do. It's what God's convincing you and me to do. And the only way we can do it is to quit and cease from our life, to stop living for ourselves, and to take on this identity in Christ and start, stop fastening ourselves after our human understanding of things. Yes, listen to me. He said, this is the fruit. He said, he chose us and ordained us and called us to bring forth fruit that our fruit should remain in whatever we ask the Father. Hallelujah. He would do it. This is the authority and the witness that he's given to us to stand in his stead, to carry out and execute his will in his place right now. This is the precious fruit of the earth which will only come to pass because 
of the result of the rain. See, rain produces fruit. Uh, the early and the latter rain. Listen to me. The rain produces the fruit of it. The rain is a testimony of the manifest presence of God. This will never happen until you have an encounter. This cannot happen without an encounter. This, I'm just listen. Say the word is encounter. Say this encounter. Say it. I got to have myself an encounter. Now I've given you. Now I've given you your whole prayer list. I've given you your whole desperation of everything that has ever happened to any man or woman that has ever been used by God. They got desperate for an encounter with God. That's the early and the latter rain. That's the great outpouring. That's what birthed the, the glory of the church. That's the fire of God from heaven. What we see take place under the ministry of Elijah was a sovereign move of God. God has had this spirit. This, this has been so strong on my spirit. It's been so strong on my spirit. Oh Lord, revive your work again in the midst of us as in the days of old, oh God. I was recently with a friend who's getting ready to come here and stand with me and shout at this mountain. I figure this, the Southern California is the greatest stronghold of the strong man. And once this thing is taken out and this is bound, it's all downhill from here. It's spoiling his house with ease. Hallelujah. That's what I figure. I figure God put me at ground zero right in the big middle of every opposition to deal with every satanic hindrance, to deal with every lying persecution and every voice of the enemy, to stand through it all. And having done all to stand, stand there to be strengthened in the midst of the fire of God where it's turned up seven times hotter still. That one like and unto the Son of God may be revealed. And as many as believe, he gave them the authority to be the sons of God. Hallelujah. So on my name. Sudan Mosikeda Hal. Sirna se tikala. How Satan e proceed. Hallelujah. An encounter with God results in the precious fruit the Father's working looking for. It's a relationship of love and interaction. This love relationship, this intimacy is where faith is developed and made big and made great and greater still. That all the exploits of heaven might be manifested through the life of those who have believed. Who move in such authority. <laughs> who operate in such love. It's not so much love one with another. It's love between you and the Father. You and the Holy Spirit. You and the Lord Jesus. And boy, is that going to result in some serious love between you and everybody else too. People trying to love one another and trying to get on the same page and be all ecumenical and whatnot. I can't believe it. Some of the crazy things that are going on right now, my goodness, if I hadn't bowed myself to not say anything bad about a person even when they deserve it, I'd go ahead and tell you. <laughs> but seeing as I vowed myself not to say anything bad about a person even when they deserve it, I'm going to be quiet about it and tell you about the good things. <laughs> Hallelujah. How about the kind of Messiah? And I pray you come and follow me too so that you don't violate things in the Spirit and, and literally exclude yourself from the great things that God's about to do. Hallelujah. Oh, sovereign God. Oh, sovereign Lord. Oh, sovereign Lord. Revive again your work in the midst of us as in the days of old. When God begins to move sovereignly, He moves sovereignly through someone who has been willing to be His champion, who's willing to, with total abandonment, do whatever it says, He says, no matter what it costs them. I mean, Elijah got down to having one person in his church, and that guy wasn't faithful, and it ended up he was all by himself and thought he was it. He alone was serving God. And Father had to reveal to him, no, he had a hidden church of about 7,000 people that he had reserved unto himself. A remnant. Do you know who you are? 
Do you know where your name has been inscribed? Are you in the book of remembrance which God has wrote, written concerning those who are often speaking about him and declaring all his wonderful works and praying and crying out for the moving of his power in the midst of the earth who recognizes that he is God, that Jesus Christ is the supreme and sovereign authority and ruler in the earth right now, not later, right now. Hallelujah. And it's manifested and seen to those people who with absolute abandonment say, that's it and that's the way it's it, it is and that's the way it's going to be. Nothing else besides. No matter what the price. Ah, pay it. Hallelujah. I was so blessed by my dear friend Rodney the other night as he stood up against the face of so much opposition standing in Constitution Hall declaring and delivering a restraining order against the powers of darkness and everything they had put on their agenda to do in the United States of America. I said, oh, praise God for somebody knows the fervent prayer of a righteous man. Somebody has found that key that ultimately unlocks the glory from on high. Somebody's willing to stand up against the opposition of everybody's ridicule as they flow in the anointing to stand against the persecution of abandonment and still know who they are and not let out based upon the witness of men for we have a greater witness. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ha! Ah, we have a greater witness than any of the witness of men can give. We have the witness of the Holy Spirit who speaks through us and, and slays the hearts of men lays them bare and naked, overwhelms them with the, the, his own divine glory just when we say something, oh, by the way, or when we give away. Hallelujah. It's true. Watch what, watch what God's about to do to everyone who is surrendered completely over to him, who no longer halt between two opinions, no longer lusting after the world and holding on to the securities of the world, still wanting to be in covenant relationship with him. So those who are no longer of a double mind. All these things James brings up in the context of 1 Kings 17 and 18. He brings all these ups, all these issues up in James chapter 5, all in the context of 1 Kings 17 and 18 you'll hear the overtones of the events and the things that Elijah said in 1 Kings 17 and 18 repeated as James describes what it looks like when somebody has the righteous prayer that avails much, it will not rain but by my word. <laughs> somebody who has such an authority and relationship with God who commands the rain to come. Hallelujah. And the precious fruit of the earth is raised up. And a sovereign move of God is, begins to be experienced. I want you to see that sovereign move of God. I believe in the sovereign movings of God, but I believe in the sovereign, move, sovereign movings of God through the context of those who are willing to obey God and move in that which He has already made available. Praise God for George Whitfield. He made a difference because he resolved himself with total abandonment to go and do whatever Christ Jesus called him to do. And he received a message from heaven that had almost altogether been forsaken. He began to declare, describe to people they must be born of the Holy Ghost. The Spirit of God must overshadow them. And when he would preach this way, the power of God would come upon people and lay uh, bare their hearts and strike them so deeply that they would tremble with fear, being overwhelmed with divine conviction. The things that are described in those meetings, that is how our nation was formed. Thomas Jefferson was in those meetings. Benjamin Franklin was in those meetings. There have been great men who said, somehow, somehow, the greatest intellectual minds, the greatest political minds that had been for 3,000 years emerged in one day, converged on the Constitution of the United States of America and performed the greatest political genius that had been seen for thousands of years. i tell you how it came. It was a spiritual awakening. It was the overflow of the divine movings of the power of the living God. I looked into history and I saw how that Andrew Jackson refined and actually made better 
those things that were established in the constitutional republic that was formed that day. And I see him in parallel with the second great awakening. He is the seventh president of the United States of America. And it's no accident that he happened to be a contemporary with Charles Finney and the second great awakening. I see God moving once again because I'm telling you the United States of America has been a lighthouse, has been a beacon for the prayers that God had birthed within the hearts of those pilgrims and our ancestors that first came to these shores that there might be a place where we have freedom to go after God with total abandonment that his word might be poured out and on the earth. You know, I thought, oh God, you're going to have to do a great networking of things in order to be able to reach so many people in these last days. And the Lord began to show me what Zinzendorf did with just a few people. The, the Moravian movement, just a few people consecrated to God. The Methodist church, the Anglican church, or rather, uh, the great churches of the day looked and said, that small group of people have sent more missionaries and added more influence on, in the world than our tens of thousands. God's got a small group, the right number of people that he's defined. And that's all it takes to change the world. It's true. All you've got to do is get big enough and brave enough and humble enough to believe it. A humility, a great humility that will cause you to step into the position and the place of the living God. No pride can step in there. No human ambition can step in there. But great humility that believes the word of God with total abandonment and gives themselves over to do that which God commands. Hallelujah. That would do rather what God has willed. Then you stand in the place of his will and you command it to be that way. No matter what. No matter what. Hallelujah. No matter what you go through, you resolve yourself. Then you say this one thing. Hear, hear me, O rulers of the earth. Do whatever it is you think you want to do, but I'm not bowing to your will. Whether I live or whether I die, it does not matter. You, I'm not bowing to your will. The Lord has given me authority to break off the yoke off of every person's neck who desires to be free. One reign of that yoke is the circumstances of life that pull you at its will. The other reign of that yoke is the deceptions and the deceits of sin and demon power that yanks you the other way at, your will, at his will. Once that yoke is broken off and it's laid there on the ground, it can pull all at once. It has no effect on you anymore. The fear of God is birthed in your heart. A love of righteousness is there as a result of an encounter. As much as the new birth changes your heart because of an encounter, as much as Saul's life and heart was changed because of an encounter, he was a shy guy, intimidated, had an inferiority complex, was somewhat of an introvert who, who, whose expression of his life was, was exemplified when they called for Saul and he went and hid himself in the stuff. He jumped in the haystack, basically, said nobody can find him, covered himself up with straw behind a plow. But when the power of God came upon him, when he had an encounter, who's out of here? Saul thought he was so, so right. He was so perfectly right. He was such the champion of heaven. He knew it better than anybody else knew it. He was trained by the best. And behind him was the wealth of his parents. Being of Tarsus, born a Roman citizen, sent to the best schools, trained by the best of the best, had risen to the highest position of authority in Israel. And then he had an encounter. And everything that he held so dear became poop in his eyes became dung. <laughs> I know, King James sanctified it, dung. But just wait till your stuff becomes a nut. It becomes, it becomes worse than nothing. It becomes worse than nothing. Dirt's nothing. But you don't despise it. It's not something you wanted to be hidden away from. You never want to see it again. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? You want it buried and gone and out of your presence. It's a defiling thing for you to even consider. Hallelujah. Oh, that's how he, that's where he coined all that he had arisen to, through the mental ascent, through the intellectual knowledge of who God is, through the expert skill that he had in the word of God and in the wisdom of his forefathers. He counted it all as worse than nothing. 
as dung that he might win this excellent knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what made the difference. That's what made him a champion in this generation. Right now, we see God doing something. We hear it. We've been hearing it. I'm telling you, those people who have given themselves over to total abandonment to the Holy Ghost heard it first. And everybody listening to them said, oh, that's foolish. Oh, that's childish. Oh, how can that ever be? Oh, you're taking too much on yourself. How can you expect that this is going to happen through you? That's what all the intellectualism, that's what all the naysayers and gainsayers and all the strivers and all those who are championing their own ideas out of their own opinions and perceptions say. But watch what's happening. Watch, what ha watch what's happening. A great awakening is taking place. An awakening is taking place. I said an awakening is taking place. It's first is happening among God's people. And God don't need many. God don't need many. God don't need many. You can decide that you're going to respond to the voice of the Holy Ghost and be empowered by His Word and His call tonight and be a leader in it. But I'm going to tell you why right now, if you're not a leader in it, you shall be overwhelmed by the glory of it all and you'll ultimately become a follower of the masses. For the masses shall come. At least you'll get in. But I'm going to be up front. I'm going to be up front. I'm going to be up front. I'm going to be on front row. I'm going to be in the middle of the... I'm going to be in the middle of the dance. I'm going to be up on the platform. I'm going to be in the move of it. I'm going to be at ground zero. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why? Why? Because God has willed it. And I have too. Because <laughs> God has purposed it. And I have too. And that's all you have to do. With total abandonment, will it? With total abandonment, purpose it. With all the passion of your being, you must have it. You're so desperate for it. You're so thirsty for it. You're so hungry for it. Hallelujah. I said this morning, if you're in the wilderness in a desert place, as Isaiah describes, when, they, when you're so thirsty and you begin to call for water like that, God will open up the heavens and pour out more than you could have ever imagined was possible. When you're that thirsty... And all of a sudden, you see a little bit of water. It might just be a little puddle of water. You're not going to take a sample and send it off for analysis. And let me say it again. You're not going to take a sample and send it off for analysis. You're not going to have it reviewed and get you several witnesses. Because uh -uh. a hungry and thirsty person in the desert knows when they spotted water. They know when they spotted water. They don't need some witness that they spotted water. Hey, is that water? Your face is in that water. You in that water. Every part of your body that can get in that water is in that water. Because you're so thirsty for the water. You can recognize the water. You can recognize the move. You can recognize the outpourings of God. You don't stand there and wonder how should I get in this? Should I start? Should I? You're in head first, man. He's flashing around praying glory. Amen. I'm on Koshi Kaladei. Hallelujah. There is a great moving of the Spirit of the living God. I was, I was standing in the 20, what was it, the 42nd floor of a hotel, hotel building in Tokyo, Japan. And I was upset. I was messed up. I was so upset. I said, Father, you look so small. You, you look so little. And Satan is so big here. This is a free society, a free republic. And the masses, the majority, know nothing of you and care nothing about you. And your churches are just a handful. In 15, 30 people in churches. And there's not very many of them. Tokyo, the biggest city in the world. Smallest number of churches of any city. Smallest number of believers. I was, I was angry. I, was, I, I, I needed to know. I got to know what's wrong here. What's wrong here? What's wrong here? What's wrong? Because I could stand and count the number of great men of God who I call dear and personal friends because of the grace of God who were there in that nation over the past 40 years. And yet, and yet, the whole nation held in prison.
I was invited to go to South Korea, and I said, you know, I don't really want to go to South Korea. I don't feel I'm supposed to go to South Korea. The person invited me to South Korea said, if you come to South Korea, I'll take you to Japan. I said, you will? I'm coming to South Korea. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm called to go to Japan, Let's go spy out Japan. The Japanese people could rise up and subdue the nations of Asia. The South Koreans don't like that. They came and visited me and said, we don't like that. They came to America to tell me, it's South Korea that's going to do this. I say nothing. Argue with the, tell the Lord, fine, whatever, you know, put your petition up there. I'm just telling you what I heard. It's South Korea. Okay, go. It's Japan. God loves to take the powerless, the small, the insignificant. South Korea's got great church. Praise God for it. But God loves to take the small, the insignificant, that which is powerless, that which is weak, that which is impossible to use, that which is despised in the eyes, valued, unworthy in the eyes of men. The Lord woke me up about five o'clock in the morning. I guess it's because all the Chinese start praying at five o'clock in the morning. I don't know what it is. Five, about five o'clock in the morning these days. It's blessed, I'm blessed because it used to be always 3.33, you know. And, <laughs> and I went ahead and I went with it because Jeremiah 3, 33, 3 says, call unto me and I'll answer and show you great and mighty things which you've never known. And I lived that way. And I, I haven't stopped calling because I want to see great and mighty things. I want the eyes of my understanding to be open. I want the spirit of wisdom and revelation to take me to a place, that encounter with God that caused me to see the exceeding greatness of his power that was given to me, an authority that was mandated to me, that was poured out upon me without limitation when God raised him up from the dead, seated him at his own right hand in the heavenly places that I might stand in his stead and declare all of his will in the earth. And that goes for you too. That's what this church is about. That's what this church is about. Yes, this church, that's what this church is about. It's about to explode with what it's all about. This church is about to explode with what it's all about. That's what this, church is about. this church is about to explode with what it's all about. It's about to explode. It's about to explode with what it's all about. Because of the grace of God. Because in the day of his power, his people are willing. But it takes somebody who's willing to reach out there and lay hold on God, lay hold on the ability that he has given out of the realms of his own divine power that brings to pass those sovereign moves. Look at it. I want you to read it with me. First Kings chapter 18 and verse 37. First Kings chapter 18. Whose Bible is this? Here, let me give you your Bible. Let me go find mine. Mighty things are happening. God is at work. I woke up at five o'clock in the morning. And the Spirit of the Lord said to me this. The Spirit of the Lord said, Mark, God always talks to me out of his word. He said, Mark, all power, all authority is given to me, both in heaven and in earth with the emphasis on Japan. I'm just looking for someone to agree with me. You and I, in the frailty of our own human existence and understanding, we look at the impossibility. We look at the weakness. We look at the failure. We look at what's not done. We look at the insurmountable odds. And we're defeated and we're stopped in our tracks, and the wind's taken out of our sail, and we cannot move. We paralyzed by being overwhelmed with those odds. We don't know where to start. We don't know where to begin. The Lord tells you and I, he calls out to us, he says, all authority is given to me in heaven and earth. Go. That's where we start. Go. 
Go and make disciples out of every nation. That's a whole lot of authority. He didn't say go and make disciples out of every individual that you see. Although that would be true as well. He, said, he took it to a bigger level. Go and make disciples out of nations. He gave us authority, a governmental authority to impact the nations of the earth. Satan will not shut down what's Satan will not shut down what's going on in Nepal. All of his feeble attempts to try to stop the move of God will only accelerate it. Everything he does is throwing fuel on the fire. He's trying to put out the fire with gasoline. It ain't going to work. It ain't going to work. <laughs> it ain't going to work. Hallelujah. <laughs> it ain't going to work. It is a nasakeia. It's not gonna, Asia, Asia is going to burn with the glory of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Middle East is going to burn with the glory of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Mambrusa Daya. Mazande Ixtea. Oromon Siatea. Zolomanea. Hallelujah. I see the unification of Korea taking place in the very near future without the firing of one shot. I see it happening because there is a great revival that's trying to be hid by the populace. Uh, concept of things and, and, and interpretation of things, spin of things. I tell you, a great revival is happening right now in North Korea. And the power of God will emerge and overwhelm the place. And every high thing will be made low. <laughs> and everything that exalts itself above the knowledge of God will be cast down. Hallelujah. Rastaya. <laughs> because Korea, North Korea and South Korea, already by dedication and vow belongs to Jesus. They already had a great outpouring of the Holy Ghost in the late 1800s. And the people of the Holy Ghost are going to rise again. That's what they call the nation of Korea, the people of the Holy Ghost. It was from that that the people of northern China were called the heavenly people because of the great revival that crossed the border of Korea into China in the late 1800s. My God, in the early 1900s. Where? Supaya. And I'm telling you, every move of God, every event in God keeps getting bigger, keeps getting greater. I'm telling you, it's go to your knees. It's, it's prayer. A prayer of relationship ultimately brings the fervent prayer of authority that says, only by my word and by my command. People want to try to, try to, try to circumvent or skip the prayer of relationship the prayer of crying out to God for the Lord, the Holy Ghost, He sovereignly decides and dictates to divide individually according to His sovereign will. What any man or woman will do. And I'm happy for it to be that way and I want to get myself into the social big middle. I need to do it all. Hallelujah. But praise God for every little expression of the Holy Ghost that comes out of the purity of knowing God and seeking Him and hungering and thirsting after righteousness and His kingdom rather than an exercise of futile, vain attempts of men because they're ambitious to have something and be recognized. That stuff's got to go. That's got to go. To be hidden in Jesus is all I desire. For, his, for He alone, for Him alone to be seen. Recently, a friend of mine said, these are not the days of Elijah. These are the days of you and me. That's a little bit challenging, isn't it? Ah, you're going to have to step into some Holy Ghost humility to say that. You're going to have to step over into uh, resigning yourself to the will of the Father to be able to say that with some kind of boldness and confidence and certainty because the pride of life wouldn't let that come out your lips. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, man. But tonight, we're breaking off the yoke. Hallelujah. Not going to be able to pull you or influence you anymore. Amen. You'll walk through the fire and not be burned. Amen. Every circumstance and situation of life that comes out against you, you'll stand fast and not be moved. 
Many times I've been in situations, man, and the great, I'm telling you, from one encounter to the next encounter, there was always great opposition. I, re, I remember stepping into a greater anointing in God as a result of a divine encounter in everything that I knew and everything that I felt and everything that was familiar to me and everything that I was comfort, comfortable with was, to, was being challenged. I'm going to say it again, everything, everything I sensed and knew in God and everything I felt and was comfortable with, everything that was familiar to me, everything was challenged. God brought me to a place where I had to leave it all because he wanted to redefine for me everything. We don't get that. We want to constantly carry stuff along with us. God said to Abraham, you're leaving it all behind. I'm taking you to a place that you not that is totally unfamiliar to you. And I'm going to challenge you in every possible way that you can be challenged with everything that is dear to you. I'm going to challenge you. And if you'll ultimately put your trust in me and know who I am, that I'm a benevolent, loving God who is faithful and dedicated and jealous for you so much so that I give you everything that I have and I will not withhold any good thing from you, but it's sacred to me and I'm not going to give it to you for you to abuse it. I'm going to know that you all in. Can you hear me? I'm going to know that you're all in. I'm going to know that you're all in. Hallelujah. Man, when we come to those points, when we come to those times, usually we opt out. We say, God, tell me to leave. God, tell me to go do this. God, tell me to, I'm not going to have to go through that. I heard one man say, my goodness gracious, if I listen to the popular opinion to only go where I'm celebrated, I'd have no place to go. <laughs> Because it's one of those, it's one of those new agey crazy things in the church. Go where you're celebrated. My God in heaven, where'd you, what Bible are you reading? What a deceiving lie of hell. <laughs> you see, fit the, put that on Jesus. If it don't work for Jesus, it don't work for me. I take every doctrine and I analyze it in the life of Jesus. And if it don't fit, out of here. Hallelujah. Manga se rapaya to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to do greater works. In other words, we're going to go to Nazareth where there's nothing but unbelief and we're going to do mighty works there. That's greater works. Do you hear what I'm saying? Jesus could not do many works because of the unbelief. We're going to go in there and do mighty works. Greater works. Mighty works. These are those days. That's why I'm in this place. I'm practicing. I'm dealing with the issues. We've seen the mighty hand of God moving. We've seen great exploits in God. I could take you through a history account of the things that we've done in this city and that God has done in our midst, and it will blow you away if I started taking you and showing you the results and bringing the people together to testify of the things that God did. But it's as though that the Lord allows it to be almost eclipsed and hidden by all the things that didn't happen. And that was and all the things that Satan was able to do to run interference against it, to hide it. But then there comes a time where the exploits and the miracles become so definite, so overwhelming, so mighty, so great that no man can defy or, the thing that God is doing or deny that it is God that's doing it. This is a pressing into this room. This is a standing against a lot of persecution. Listen, the, the miracles that God taught Moses at his first encounter only got him in trouble. It almost got him stoned. And not, it, not only did it get him in trouble, it got all the people he was delivered, supposed to be delivering in bad trouble so that he brought greater oppression upon their head through the miracles which he did. It's true. Now they had to make bricks without straw. Ha, ha, ha. But something better is going to happen because somebody's not going to back down. Because somebody's not going to retreat. Because somebody's not going to run and hide in the stuff. Because somebody's going to stand and believe God, though it costs them everything, though they look like an idiot, though they feel like a fool, ha, 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 ha. though they've been shamed and disappointed and seemingly left hung out to dry. Ha, ha, ha. Somebody's not going to back down. 
Somebody's not going to back down. I'm seeing somebody. I'm looking at somebody. Somebody's not going to back down. Somebody's going to go ahead and do it again. Somebody's going to lay hands on another person that's sick. Somebody's going to cast out another devil and command Satan to listen to every word that they got to say. Somebody's going to go to prayer again. Somebody's going to cry out to God and lift up their voice and give him no rest day or night until everything that he has promised and purpose is realized and fulfilled to their life. Somebody is going to be a part of a sovereign move of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father gave me the, great, the greatest traveling ministry partner I could have ever, ever had. <laughs> Someone who's fully bought and sold out won't be left out. Says it's got to be. <laughs> it can't be any other way. We won't allow it. But God, who is faithful as much as he is the God of love, he's the God of faithfulness. When he was ready to expose himself, to fully reveal himself in the fullness of all that he is, he said, I am merciful, I am gracious, I am compassionate, I am full of covenant love and faithfulness. I know King, Je King James said, full of goodness and truth, that's good too. But the Hebrew words are a little different than that. They both work. He's a goodness, is co his covenant love. He's devoted to us. He's devoted to that which he's promised. He's devoted to fulfill all that he has spoken. We can count on it. It may look like we're, it may look like we're gonna be thrown in the fire. We may get thrown in the fire. We may get thrown in the lion's den. We may be a with total abandonment. We may go all the way down into the midst of those hungry lions. We may hear the gallows being built every day. We may hear the roar of the cries and the threats of those in power whose word cannot be denied that we're going to be hung the next morning. <laughs> but if we don't back down, we say, listen, every one of us run the risk of having been born for such a time as this. But yet being unwilling, God then raises up deliverance from someone else. You listen to me. You listen to me. You can ill afford to lose such great opportunity. You listen to me. God's left no one out. You have to leave yourself out. God has excluded no one. You have to exclude yourself through doubt and unbelief. It is impossible to please God. It would be terrible if we left it there, wouldn't it? Without faith, it's impossible to please God. They that come to God must believe that he exists, that he's here right now, that he is a very present God, that he has done what he has said he would do, that he will be with us and not, and that he will not leave us nor forsake us, that he will be alongside of us to the end of the world to execute his will on the level of making disciples out of all nations. I know he's here the same way he was there then because of what he said just in that one passage of Scripture. But there's multitudes of other voices, of words described out of the Word of God which cannot fail till everything is fulfilled that calls out to us declaring the same. It's true. Who will believe God? In 1 Kings chapter 18, in verse 37, hear, hear Elijah. Verse 36, I'm going to start at verse 36. He said, And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God. And I, I love that because although Elijah is the prophet who stands with absolute authority in God's stead, he still recognizes the divine order of the hour. 
never forsaking the divine order of the way that God has ordained things to be. At the time of the evening sacrifice, Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant and that I have done all the things that I have done all these things at your word. See, Elijah, this helps us to understand more fully 1 Kings 17, 1. It shall not rain except by my word. But we understand that Elijah simply was commanding that which God had willed. It's not making it up based upon our own ideas. It's learning to live by the word of God. It's come under the mandate and the authority. It's a consecration only to live by the word of God. For there are many interests pulling on us continually to live by our own word or the word of man or the word of circumstance or even worse than that, the word and ideas of Satan. And so few have come to the discerning position of discernment to know the difference. And it's only by living in the Holy Ghost. So many people have been filled with the Word, but they've never known how to receive the things of the Spirit. To let the glory of God be manifested through them that the Word of God be, might be declared through their living and actions and deeds. And now watch what happens. Verse 37, hear me, O Lord, hear me. Listen, what Elijah is showing right now is he's showing He's showing and demonstrating the fruits of relationship. He's showing and demonstrating the fruits that God has described that you and I are supposed to have in John 15, verse 16, that we are supposed to have a fruit, this kind of fruit and that this fruit should be continually with us. I know we can just say remain, and we don't understand that remain. We think, well, it's fruit and it's fruit. That fruit's going to be always, you know, uh, uh, you know, and it's kind of like been defined as a soul, and so that soul comes into the kingdom and they're never lost, and that is taking liberties with the Word of God and using it and applying it in a way that it isn't being, that it isn't, it isn't to be used. Because he's talking about fruit, a kind of fruit, an expression that will always be on in our lives, always be seen in us. And that fruit is this, that whatever we ask Papa, he will do it. That's happening with Elijah. He's going to show right now. He's going to show who really has a relationship with God. The people of Israel were saying that they the ones who had a relationship with God. And so he said, okay, let's see who really has a relationship with God. You call upon God and see if he answers you. And if, you're, and if he answers you, then we will serve him. I will call upon God. And if God answers me, then we will serve him. So that you no longer hop between two opinions. And the contest has come yet again here in the midst of the church in these last days. The United States of America was born into its existence because there were men and women of God who had authority with God that made a disciple out of this nation. This nation is a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. This government that we live in and have prospered in and been blessed in was formed in an awakening, refined in a second great awakening and be will, will be restored in the third great awakening Amen. that we are right now embarking Amen. upon. Amen. That there are those of us who through prayer and fastings and crying out to God and going and doing and moving and giving Father no rest and knowing those things which he's commissioned us to do will not cease to do it. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Subokotadea. We don't need finances to give us permission. We don't need an audience of applause to give us permission. <laughs> we don't need any worldly system or any church system to give us permission. God has given us permission, already commanded us to do it. Paul rightly described the necessary authority. He described the intensity of the conflict, saying, be strong in the strength of the Lord and the power of his might. That's the only way that's going to work. Taking to yourself the whole armor of God as his divine authority and his mantle which he poured out upon us when he baptized us in the Holy Ghost and fire. 
that you may be able to stand against all the tricks of Satan. Hallelujah. Mokosia, Nakateya, Nakasaya. Mondalaya. Now mental ascent isn't going to be there anymore. Trying to worship God out of the concepts of what we know about him, what we think we can do for him, it ceases to exist. Suddenly we fall down upon the rock, Christ Jesus. We cry out for the water to come forth from the rock. We drink and out of our bellies become the expressions of the Holy Ghost and heaven is heard and the glory of God is seen upon our faces. Our countenance takes on a glory glow with an ever-increasing intensity as we walk out this walk with him day by day, year by year. Hallelujah. We increase more and more. Faith grows stronger and stronger. We become bolder and bolder. We have a, we, 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 but also die. Bold as lions run like horses. Hallelujah. We don't, we're not, we're not just, we're not just easing on into this program. We're not gently walking through the, the process. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 37. Hear me, O Lord. Hear me that the people may know that you are the Lord God. And that you have turned their hearts back again. It's encounters with God. It's the sovereign movings of God. It's the sovereign encounters with God that turns the people's hearts to Him. It's the sovereign movings of God where great outpourings of the Spirit come where people are captivated by the overwhelming presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. But that happens because someone, some man, some woman presses into a realm of relationship with God to a place of encounter. And that sovereign expression of God's divine glory flows through them as a willing vessel, as a water course that heaven has found place to be expressed through that's the sovereign moving of God. Would you like to be a part of a sovereign moving of God? Think about it. One of the things that, that has always stood out to me about Billy Graham is he's always been amazed and overwhelmed at how it was possible that God ever could use him. He's never been able to figure that out. He's always surprised and amazed how God used him. How did God do that? It's just, what, how did I get here? But you look back at his life and you look at what he was willing to do when nobody else was willing to do it. You look at where he was willing to go when no one else was willing to go there. When everybody had all the excuses and all the reasons of why you can't do that. Of why it's impossible. Of why it won't work. Just listen to what everybody is saying is impossible, won't work, you can't do that, and you'll have the mind of Christ if you do the opposite. Huh? If you go ahead and do what everybody says you can't do, that's probably what God's doing. What everybody says won't work, that's exactly what the Lord would have you do. How do you get out of the reasonings of men? You know, we, we just, we just, we, we go through these things all the time. We're not just talking to you about things that other people live. We're talking to you about what we live on a daily basis. We just went through a situation where, I mean, it was impossible for us to go to D.C. And, and stand with Rodney, but I knew the Lord wanted me to go and be with him and stand there with my friend and let him know that I was 100% in on this thing. But it was a terrible time. Because there was so much that had to be done. The hay had to come in at the ranch. The, the, the situations and the circumstances that we needed to deal with with the pressures that's going on with the county and the issues going on surrounding this church right now. And then another power tried to dictate to us and say, you have no money, you have no finances. The almighty dollar says you can't do what God told you to do. You know what I've learned to do? I, don't, I, got, a, I got a switch, turn all them off. I know exactly where it is. Click. <laughs> I just turn all that off. It's irrelevant. It does not apply to me. It does not matter to me. I count on my own life dear unto myself. Let the hay rot in the field before I fail to do his will. Uh -huh. Come on, over my dead body will the dollar bill rule over me and dictate to me what I can and cannot do. Because huh? if you get up and start moving out in faith, no matter what it is that God's laid upon your heart to do, he'll meet you there. And there'll be provision aplenty. 
Somebody said, God's never late. He's late all the time for me. All the time. He's always late. He doesn't come in like the Calvary at the last minute. He's late. But he's always faithful that everything in the end will all be taken care of. It'll all settle out. Now there'll be a loss of nothing. In the end, there'll be loss of nothing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Ha ha. Hallelujah. Yeah. Daniel might have thought he was late after he was let down in the midst of the lion. Huh? Huh? As he stood there all night staring at them hungry lions. And they had the same demon hunger look in their eyes as they always did. Have you ever looked in the eyes of a leper or a lion? Even the presence of a leper will make your hair stand up on end. You will feel the fear of it in every fiber and bone of your being. Try it sometime out in the jungles of Africa. You know when a leper is around. You were born with the instinct somehow. <laughs> Believe me. And here he is standing there with all those hungry, half-starved, growling lions whose stomachs were growling louder than the roar of the hunger because God had closed their mouth. They could not open their mouth. But nonetheless, Daniel had to stare and face them all night. And what makes matters worse is it was pitch black, dark. Because it was a pit with a cover on it. And all I could do is smell them and feel them moving around him. That's hectic. <laughs> I've never had to go through that kind of opposition standing in this place with him. But I want to. I'm willing to. In every turn of the road, I make the decision of whether I am willing to or going to. And many people say they would be Joshua and Caleb, but we watch a lot of folks turn tail and run when the battle heat comes up. We don't hold it against anybody because we know what's going on. And we know that unless we have had the encounter we've had with God, we would have joined them. We would have tucked tail and run too. We would have abandoned ship and said enough is enough. It was only the encounter that changed everything. It was the encounter that kept us. It's the encounter that gave us the insight. It's the encounter I have had with God that causes me to see into the future. I know what's going on in the future. I've seen it in God. That's why you can't stop me. That's why no persecution has been able to turn me aside because a heavenly vision gave me insight to see what God is going to do. All I have to do is faithfully pursue and a sovereign move of God will take place through my life. And God challenges you because you have parted this. You in the Abiding Place Ministry and everybody who's been a part of the Abiding Place Ministry, there are hundreds and hundreds have come and gone. Thousands of people have transferred through this ministry, have come in and out of the building over the history of this church. I hear from many of them at different times. There are some that are bitter and angry. And there's some that are full of God's glory and great, grateful for all that God did here in their life. Father has positioned them and placed them in strategic locations and they have the same passion, they have the same purpose as the rest of us who seek only the kingdom of God and His righteousness and His glory to be revealed in the earth. But you much a part of this as I am because every time I go someplace and God starts moving and I get invitations that Ann and I could be taking up and doing full time for the rest of our lives. The Lord says, go back to San Diego. Go back to the ministry. Go back there. Stir up the things. Go back there. Speak to the mountain. I'm going to do a work that you cannot imagine. I'm going to do a work that if anyone told you about it, you wouldn't be able to imagine it. I'm going to try to wrap this up. I'm going to try to close this up here with just a few, few more words. I want you to listen to me very carefully. In Isaiah chapter 51 and verse 9, you can hear the prophet crying out to God, Awake! Awake, O oh God! Listen to that. Let me go over there and read this. You can hear this passion, this cry. 
Oh, awake as in the days of old, oh God. Let, let your power be revealed where you showed your domination over all the kings and all the principalities and all the powers of men. That's the pa passion of Isaiah. Suddenly, God turns it around in Isaiah 52, 1. He turns it around. And he says to men, Awake! Awake! Put on your beautiful garments, O Zion! <laughs> See, they cry out to God to wake up. He's already awake! He's already poured out his authority. He's already given the mandate. He's already decreed it. He's already given the authority of it and the blessing of it to make them a nation that would be above all nations. He's given them a power and ability to execute His will, to declare the power of His kingdom in all the earth. Isaiah 52, verse 1, is a message that every one of us better grab a hold of here tonight. Listen, I'm tired. I'm totally worn out. <laughs> we haven't had much sleep. It's been that way for quite some time. <laughs> Uh, the other night, uh, uh, we were on the West Coast. It was uh, about midnight there. It would have been about 9 o'clock here. And at midnight, uh, we were trying to get in bed. We got in bed at 1 o'clock, but we had to get up at 4 o'clock, which would have been 1 o'clock in the morning here. So we got about two hours of sleep, got on the airplane, we took off, came to, came to San Diego, uh, hit the ground running, going to get up in the morning early to take off to go do the things over at the Mission Training Center to get back here as quickly as we can on Saturday to be able to help put things in order according to the things the Father has dictated to us about just advancing worship and moving things forward in worship. And I'm so blessed to see what's happening in David and Heather's life. I mean, just the power and the glory of God is about to sweep them away into the heavenly things. I'm just so blessed to see how people that are stepping up with boldness because you're never going to enter into the anointing that God has for your life until there's been enough of an encounter that produces with in you and a boldness that deals away with all, does away with all the insecurities and the sense of failure and inability. Yeah. And then we're going to get back here so that on Sunday we can minister to you and then on Monday we're going to go fly out to go stand with our dear friend Rodney and dear friends, Rod, pastors Rodney and Adonica again for the last week of the meetings there and potential expectation that they may be extended and that a Holy Ghost revival will break out in the halls of Congress. <laughs> Hallelujah. They started a year, we hear that they started a prayer meeting of a bunch of congressmen, both Republican and Democrats, have started a prayer meeting where they're praying I think it's every day when they're assembled, and I believe that they're going to call, and uh, Rodney and others are going to be able to go over there and minister to them, lay hands on every one of them, every one of them get overwhelmed by the power of God, have an encounter with the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> and this, Rodney, I hope you're listening, man. Ah, because I'm telling you, it's going to happen. I know it's going to happen. We hooked up. It just takes two people to hook up in faith for the greatest impossible things to ever be done that could possibly be imagined. Amen. Amen. And we know what the anointing, and when you get an encounter with God, we know what the anointing is like. I mean, it's smelly, and it smells good. Ooh. Ah, it, it, it's oily, and it's sticky, and when it's on you and somebody gets close to you, it gets on them, and suddenly it's passed around, and everybody in Congress smells like that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ha <laughs> ha. Hallelujah. Asakoya. In theological terms, we call it the contagium of holiness. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh -huh. It's the contagium of the sacred. Hallelujah. Not contagious. It's not an infectious disease. It's a divine grace. It's contagious. Mondeya. <laughs> It gets on you and suddenly you get a personalized invitation to step over into heaven and live in the presence of the living God and sit at his table forever. Hallelujah. And it's hard to refuse 
or to resist such an overwhelming presence of the living God when somebody has taken a hold of the realms of heaven and know how to be a water course which the Spirit of the Lord can find its free course through. Let that be you, Jesus' name. Let that be you, Jesus' name. Don't back down. Don't bow. bow. Don't bend. Stand. Stand. Hupostasis. Hupostasis. Faith is hupostasis. It's a firm footing place for you to stand. You want to play this game, you're going to have to find a good firm footing where nothing can knock you off balance. Watch what happens. Watch what accuracy comes into your life. <laughs> Hallelujah. I've got a firm footing in this place of a tangible reality. That sounds better than substance, doesn't it? Hupostasis is all of that. It's a firm footing in a place of tangible reality. It was a word used in ancient Greek to describe something that was absolutely certain. It was provable. It was evidence. But it's more than that because it's a firm footing for us to stand. And sometimes we need a firm footing because there's a lot of things come try to throw us off balance. We've got to have a firm footing. I told my wife the other day, I was teaching her about the swing and golf, and I said, baby, she was trying to help her understand that she didn't have to look awkward standing there. She just needed to be balanced. I said, you want to play this game, you're going to have to find a firm footing. Here, get you in your stance. I walked over and I just gave a little bit of push and I showed her she was off balance. I said, you've got to find the firm footing to play this game. If you find a firm footing, you can, you can accomplish every part of this. It's all about that. It's all about that balance. It's all about that place, a firm footing that you can have in Christ Jesus tonight to say, look, it's done. I'm not going to be intimidated anymore. I'm not going to look to myself anymore. God will change you. He will take an introverted person and turn them into a person that is so bold and so full of love and concern for every human being. So outgoing. So sensitive and personal. That's what God, the encounters of God will do that for us. The encounters of, encounters of God will fill us with a great compassion for the, even the most vilest of people. We will love them as our own sons and daughters. These are the beginnings of the movings of revival of that sovereign work of grace which takes place because somebody's willing to take a hold of God and believe what he says and do it with him. God's crying out and he's saying, awake, awake, put on your beautiful garments. I'm telling you what the beautiful garment is. It's be endued with the mantle of Christ. Put on therefore the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. People are battling against the lust of the flesh. You don't need to battle against the lust of the flesh. All you need to do is be endued with the beauty of his presence, with the beauty of his tangible glory. All you got to do is put on your beautiful garments, O Zion. All you have to do is put on Christ Jesus, that gift that was freely given to us, this outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Be filled with the Spirit. Is continually, be continually overwhelmed with his presence. Be continually built up in the faith. Hallelujah. Be continually overwhelmed. Be continually overcome. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He's teaching us to walk out the, re the realms of faith, to live in the realms of divine power and glory and confidence. He's teaching us step by step are you willing to come into a school and learn? Are you willing to be taught? Are you willing to be encouraged instead of discouraged? Are you willing to be victor instead of defeated, more than a conqueror instead of overcome? Are you willing to, at every point of failure, to rise up and devote yourself to succeed? And consecrate yourself with greater resolve to succeed than ever before. You'll never be defeated. Oh, hallelujah. 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 King Brongashaya. That's just the way I am about everything. It is. We bought some chickens and I had somebody try to take care of the little chickens and then they called me up the next morning and said, all of them are gone. Because they weren't covered. You know what I wanted to do right then and there? Order the chickens right now. Get more over there right now.
I wanted them there. I wanted to replace them immediately. But, it, you know, I had to be patient because it was the weekend and nobody was in the office. But I'm telling you right now, I was first thing on Monday morning, Pennsylvania time, when I could get somebody, I was right and ready. I had their telephone number and I ordered, I said, the same order that we just placed. I said, we need to go ahead and send us another one just like it. This time we're taking care of it and we're going to make a big deal of it. How are we going to succeed? Because any time I fail, I am that much more resolved to a greater success with it. And it's just, just do that. You'll never be defeated. You'll never be stopped. You'll never be held back. Hallelujah. Saboka, are you listening to me? God says, awake, awake. You're telling me to wake up. I'm telling you to wake up. I'm telling you to put on the mantle that I gave you, the anointing. There was a mantle that Elijah had that was part and parcel in view of how Elisha saw him to the divine glory that was revealed and executed through his life. God's given you a mantle. Papa's given you a mantle. I'm going to read one more verse of scripture to you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, every night prayer is going on here in this place. Every night, 7 o'clock. We want you to come and understand that there's something that's birthed in prayer that can be birthed nowhere else. Listen to me. Jesus forever lives to pray. He forever lives to make intercession for us. Therefore, there must be a whole lot of value in prayer and intercession if Christ Jesus, the King of glory, ever lives to do it. If there's anything that was a hallmark of who he was in his relationship with the Father, it was his consistency of going apart into a private place along with God to pray. Dear people, Every revival, every great move of God, every great encounter was birthed in a place where people had consecrated themselves and given themselves to pray. We have been given a mandate and a banner around here of what we're praying for. We're crying out for an awakening. We're crying out for God to revive His work in the midst of us. We're crying out for God to bring that rain, that early in the latter that James describes. We're crying for out for God to manifest His power in such a way that you and I begin to participate with the singular heavenly vision that is revealed in the Word of God. A lot of people talk about heavenly vision, but there is a singular heavenly vision revealed in the Word of God that Paul described when he gave his defense to King Agrippa. He said, I saw him in the way, and he gave me the power to turn men from the power of darkness unto light, from the power of Satan unto God. He's given, God has given to us this ability. If those are around us right now are, 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 are right in darkness and the, our, our gospel is hid from them, it's hid from them because we have failed to do what God has called us to do. We have failed to be faithful to the heavenly vision. If our gospel be hid, it is hid from them whom the God of this world has blinded their eyes so that they cannot see. But yet God in this heavenly vision has commissioned us with a divine power and authority to turn them from the power of Satan unto God to open up their eyes from darkness to light so that they might see. That's what we're praying about. Are we crying out for God to move among us? We're crying out to God to move through us. We're crying out for the fire. You see Elijah standing there at that place and he's crying out for the fire that is going to bring a great moving of the Spirit that will turn the hearts of the people back to God. It will turn the hearts of the people back. And Elijah is seen there and that spirit of Elijah is seen at every point in which Jesus Christ is manifested. It was seen in the, in the life of John the Baptist, the very spirit of that glorious authority with God. It's seen in the very last days when he comes again just before the Lord Jesus returns to set up his kingdom. I'm crying out that those things which Father has willed in heaven, I understand what Father has willed in heaven. I understand that he has willed that the strong man of Southern California, which I might even define as the seat of Satan, because today, most of his iniquity and his vile slanders and lies are propagated right through the media out of this region. And to bind the strong men and to spoil his house. To overthrow the powers of intellectualism. To overthrow the powers 
of demonic deception that has so blinded the hearts of men. I was so blessed. I said it once. I'm going to say it again. When Rodney issued a restraining order against the powers of darkness and he commanded this, no, it will continue. There will be more time in Jesus' name. Man, I fully embrace that. And God has put a similar word in my mouth as well. And I want, Father, to put the same word in your mouth so that you might understand what I'm saying because these things are not intellectually understood. You can't grasp it with the concepts of your mind. These things are a result of an encounter with God. It's birthed in your heart by divine revelation. That's the only thing that's going to get you up in the midst of this heat and cause you to start moving around with an intensity and a passion that can touch heaven or something that is real and genuine coming out of the desperation and the neediness of your heart. Otherwise, it's just religion. You're just saying something that the pastor's saying, just going through the motions. Whatever your need is, all you got to do is lift up your voice and begin to cry out to God who loves you desperately, who's brought you into a relationship, who's authored a relationship for you that you might learn how to interact with him and fully realize the blessings and benefits of relationship to where that when you talk to him, he talks back, but he only talks truth. And if you're talking falsehood, he can't hear you and you can't hear him. You've got to learn to speak truth and hear truth to communicate. Oh, hallelujah. And God, the spirit of truth, is here to teach us how. Hallelujah. Melchizedek, limbara si teretai. The word of truth is here to govern our minds and keep our minds and thoughts and help us to understand the realms of that truth. Sudabasi preteyatishi. That we may cooperate with the spirit of truth. Habakkuk 3.2. Lakarasini. Libekanaseya. You know what you want? Can I tell you what you want? Hey, listen, can I tell you what you want? Yes. You want an overwhelming manifestation of the power and the glory of God in your life greater than anything that's ever happened to you before. Now, you know what Father wants? He wants you to have an encounter with Him, a glory and a manifestation of His presence and power greater than anything that you've ever experienced before. Now that you're in agreement with Father. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now that you understand according to the things, we, what's, in, what's, what's in his heart's also in your heart. Now you're on the same page with him. Now you can begin to talk to him on the terms of truth and you're going to hear him answer. Hallelujah. You're going to lift up your voice and you're going to cry out to God and you're going to ask him for rain at the time of rain. He's going to send the rain. And that encounter with God, that encounter with God, that which is his manifest presence, rain always represents his manifest presence, that encounter with God is going to bring forth the fruits of relationship with him so that whatever you ask, he will do it. That's where you will mature into a place that whatever you see, he will do it. That his power and his glory might be manifested in the earth through you, that you may be a witness that he raised from the dead, that he is the kingdom of heaven, that he is the absolute sovereign authority over heaven and earth right now, and you, as him, you are his ambassador sent to do those things in his stead that he himself is doing. That's what's happening to you. That's what's happening. I see a great moving of the Spirit of the living God sweeping the Calvary chapels. I see a great moving of the Spirit of God sweeping uh, the denomination of the churches. I see it happening again. A shaking of the Spirit of the Lord that causes men to tremble in His presence, to be overwhelmed by Holy Ghost conviction, to hunger and thirst after righteousness, to begin to be able to receive the capacity to receive where before there was nothing but a stony response. It's happening, taking place. And as you begin to pray, as you begin to lift up in your, your voice in this place, I'm telling you, faith will supercharge the atmosphere. I'm telling you, you listen to me. And nothing that has happened up to this point can compare to that which God is, is about to do. Some people say, oh, I wish we could go back to what God was doing there before. Oh, that was amazing, that thing that God did over there. No, that was just a place of, of encounter with God. That was a pre place of preparation for greater works than these. And that's where we find ourselves moving. Because we won't stop. We won't stop. Ah, we won't stop. Satan says, I got you now. You go, no, you don't. You're lying. You're stinging liar. Shut up. In Jesus' name. Father, tell him to be quiet. I'm sick of hearing him. And then it ends it right there. 
sikara masa de di piliga kataya laya harasafanaya tu di labo saya right behind this wall we have 33,000 square foot of space can hold two three thousand people out there i figure we can get four or five i was over there that building that we bought and i felt crowded i felt like we didn't have enough room somebody said what's wrong with you man are you have you meant are you gone mental there's plenty of room to place to her us over here now there's not enough room for me here the only reason we even bought this place was because it was going to be turned into the recording studio and the media studio so because I already had my heart set upon this place. Because this is what Father sold us a long time ago that we were going to move into. So I told the people over at the other building, I said, you need to buy this building from us. They said, the people who had the loan on it, they said, we're not going to buy this. You, you have to, we'll buy this only if you make up the difference. And the thing went in the hole more than 50% because of the, de the decline, real estate value. And I just left it there. I just left it there because God put the word in my mouth and I asked him. I said, you need to buy this from us. I put the, God put the word in my mouth. And then one day I told Rob, I said, go tell them they need to buy this thing from us because God put the word in my mouth. Oh, we're not going to do that. Then all of a sudden they come to us, hey, you know what? We'll buy that from you. You'll be clean. You owe us nothing. We'll be even. I called on this place. We called on this place over the years many times. Every day, every time it was iron gates, as it were, brass doors. Huh? We called on it just after those people told us that they would buy it, they had our loan, would buy it from us. And they said, no, well, right now it's in escrow and there's a backup offer after that. Ha <laughs> ha. I was not moved. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon me. I said, we're moving over there into that place over there. And everybody sits there and looks at me, huh? -huh you know, like a deer in the headlights. It's hard to hook up with faith when you haven't had an encounter. It's hard to be moved by the inspirations of God when that isn't what's real in your life, when you're stuck in circumstances and situations and constantly overwhelmed by the impossibilities and why you are the wise or why you can't move forward. Uh, are you listening to me? That's changing here tonight. It's changing. I'm telling you there is an authority in the house that's changed because there's a divine encounter that Father has for you. The divine encounter means today they delivered to us our move out date over there. Ha! Hallelujah! Right at that very time, the people who own this property called us up and said, So you want this property? Ha ha ha! How soon can you move in? Ha 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 ha! 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 Ah! And the doubtful and unbelieving mind and the humanistic mind always calculates the coincidence, always calculates random circumstance and events. Oh, how the, the wishful think, thinking of the impossible happened coincidentally. How lucky can he be? How does he do that? How does he end up over there on the Naval Training Center with all that property? Huh. How does he end up over there on that six acres with 83,000 square foot of building space for $10,000 a month? How do you do that? <laughs> How do you do that? How do you have miracles coming and going? What's going on around there? What are you doing anyways? Subduing kingdoms, bringing down strongholds, being mighty in God. That's what we're doing right here. Hallelujah. Preparing for the great day of the Lord that's about to dawn upon the horizon and shake the earth with the brightness of His coming. Hallelujah. That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. And we're standing around here and praying every night that we're not having church and even on those nights too as well. But, but, it's, but, but you know what I mean? Just those nights are, other nights are dedicated for just the prayer. Believing God for this great outpouring is going to fill up that 33,000 square foot. Listen, when I moved on to the Naval Training Center, when we moved on to the Naval Training Center because you were willing to follow my lead, the Lord told me to tell you, Wreck the place, clean the whole place out, prepare the whole 3,000 square foot for meeting. Get more chairs, we need 2,000 on the floor. 
and God filled it. But when I stepped in this building, and then the first time I feel the anointing, I feel the great power of God, I feel the tangible manifest presence, shakening power of God, electrifying working of the power of the Holy Ghost is undescribable. You didn't have to experience it to know what I'm talking about. And everybody I brought in there, and brought in here, is overwhelmed with the glory of God, the presence of, of the living God, who are able to see and feel and understand what God is doing. Because Father does it more than a manifestation of mental affirmation, of intellectual ability to perceive that it's a possibility, but gives to us a revelation of what has already been done, that it is his will and his mind. That's a whole different realm. Hallelujah. The Lord told me, just no, just put up enough walls now. Confine it. Confine it. Let people see past the wall. I'll give them ability to see past the limitation. I'll give them the ability to see past and move past the confinement, see the whole place filled. Rodney said, I want to come. I said, why don't we just do it outside? He said, there's enough light. I said, I'll make sure there's enough light. Joel Stockstill said, when, could, oh, when do I get to come? He told me the other day, you know, you've been a part of our church for a long time. Mom has your book. Leaders have your book. We read, we, we refer constantly to sequential gospels. It's such a blessing to us. I said, Joel, I've always felt connected with the church and ministry. This four generations of ministry, you know, and, and what God's done through the stock stills is amazing. What God's done to them. I said, he said, well, when do I get to come? We've already got him on the calendar. Then another one, and then and another, and another. And God in, continue uh, to enlarge the company of his saints and the company of his mighty men. Watch what happens. Watch what's... Watch. Watch. Watch what God will do. I pray that you will be able to see it coming. Hallelujah. That when it gets here, you know it's... A it is the next step. I'm sorry to tell you this, but I'm leading the way here in Southern California. I'm leading the way into the great movings of the Spirit of the living God here in this region. And I'm not really sorry to tell you, it's just a form of apology for those of you who do not believe. Because we know who we are. We know what God called us to do. And though this great mountain has stood before us, and though that which men would quantitate and men would conceptualize to be successful could not be <laughs> attributed to us, yet God has been faithful. And those things which he's promised to do, he'll do. He does things. He changes everything. Today. You know things radically change in one day? huh? You know you were born in a day? You know you are dying a day? You know things change radically and redefine everything for you in a day? One day. One day. One day. One. Suddenly everything about your life and everything about what you know changes. It's different. Huh. Becomes different. Becomes new. Takes on a whole new dimension. Watch what God will do. I pray that you'll come and join with us in prayer and supplication and petition with thanksgiving unto the Lord. This is what Father wants you to do. Hallelujah. You lift up your voice and take a hold of the fervent prayer of the righteous man. Hallelujah. Come take a hold of this place of relationship with the Lord where you are learning and being taught by the Holy Ghost in this context of that which looks so confined and limited to begin to talk with God and hear him answer back so that you might mature into a place that whatever you ask him, he will do it because there is a relationship, a dynamic of interaction that is going on that is more real than any other relationship that you have in this life. And that's what Papa's purposed it to be. I want to just close with just this one story because it, it means so much to me. To me, it says volumes of things about this dynamic of relationship with the Lord. And what Father's ever done with one person is a proof that he will do it for you too. Because he's no respecter of persons. He loves everybody the same. I'm telling you, 
if you've got a greater anointing, he's more jealous over you because of that greater anointing. Believe it. But yet, Father's purpose that everybody can have an unlimited manifestation of his anointing and glory in their life. It's amazing. I love the story about the Assemblies of God pastor who was assigned to take care of Catherine Coleman. He did not like her. He did not believe in women ministry in the church. But because he was a good Assemblies of God man and he was under authority, he did what those who were over him in the leadership of the church told him to do, and that was to take care of Catherine Coleman when she came in for the meeting in San Jose, California. So as a good assemblies of God, good denominational man, he drove to the airport, he, re, he picked her up, she said nothing to him, he said nothing to her. He was cordial only to the point of hello, welcome, and left it there. The first night of the meeting, he goes and picks her up at, his room, at, her, at her hotel, he takes her to the place of the meeting, he escorts her to the green room or the ready room, where the leadership gets to prepare, and if they want to receive some guests, do so. She received none that night before the meeting. Most ministers don't. It's a time just to be alone with the Lord, prepared. And he sat outside just waiting on her because he was supposed to escort her out. She was there a long time in that room. What she was doing was she was in there praying. And she was saying, Lord, do not let Catherine Coleman walk out of this room onto that platform. Lord, do not let me leave this room without being clothed in your majesty and glory so that only your power only your majesty can be seen, only Jesus. That's what she's in there doing. She's walking back and forth, talking to the Lord, waiting for that power from on high to overwhelm her. She doesn't have a bunch of doctrinal ideas about what it is and what it's going to be. She has an encounter with God, a relationship, and she knows what it's like. And she's waiting for that overwhelming glory that those of us who know what it's like to come upon her and overwhelm her. It's the mantle. And I tell you, it's that way for everyone who wants to put on the Lord Jesus Christ because it's an everyday thing. It's an every morning thing. Get up and say, good morning, Holy Spirit. I recognize you and I want you to know that I give you full, full authority over my life. I want to be your servant today. You are my master. I don't want to do anything except for what you want me to do. I want to know how to hear you and move only in your direction like never before. It's something that you participate with every day or you deny every day. Suddenly that assemblies of God men begin to shake in his chair as he sat outside the door because he was overwhelmed by a glory that he had never experienced before. Because at that moment, what Catherine Coleman was asking for swept into the room. The accompaniment of heaven on a manifest glory and a manifest presence that no doctrinal ideas can define for you. It's a relationship. People are stuck and their limited concepts of what they can understand about the infinite God's eternal word. And I'm telling you, if we were left to our intellect to be accepted by God, we would all be rejected. Yeah. It's about a relationship, not about a knowledge. Praise God. A woman had learned how to talk with the Father, how to interact with the Holy Spirit, to where that she was developed in a place where she could ask and Father would answer in a realm that would be manifested to everybody that she encountered. To where that the blind would see, the deaf would hear, the crippled would walk, everybody would be overwhelmed by the manifest presence of Jesus. And I'm telling you, Father has this for you. What stands between you and that is yourself. 
that Jesus said you must deny. Catherine Kuhlman would constantly talk to people about, I will take you to the place where I died, where Catherine Kuhlman died and ceased to exist. I can take you to the spot. I can define for you the date and the hour and the time, the place. I can take you there right now. I can show you where she died and where Christ Jesus began to live. And she had been in the ministry for many years before that day. And people say, well, that doesn't fit into my doctrinal concept. Well, what you, why don't you do this? Why don't you fit into relationship with God in a dynamic of power and glory that is manifested through your life so that all men may see the living Jesus Christ in you, the outpouring of the Holy Ghost through your life, the majesty and the splendor of his power manifested through you. The Word describes these things very clearly. We understand them from the Word. These are not extra-biblical, experiential concepts that we're talking about. It's just things that people cannot reason with the intellect and understand within the intellectual realm. This wonderful dynamic of relationship. Hallelujah. <laughs> Explain love to someone. Explain the dynamics of your love for that person that you married. Break it down for them. Doctrinize that for a while, will you? Tell us all how it all happened and how it all came to pass and into, came into being. You can't. You might be able to say, well, I met her at Point Loma Nazarene University. And she wrote me love letters every day. <laughs> and she chased me till she caught me. I tell her all the time, I say, baby, I love you more than you love me. She says, no, you don't, because I loved you first. Wow. Sound like Jesus? Sound like Jesus? I try to say, oh, baby, I love you more than you love me. Oh, no, you don't, because I love you first. Jesus, I love you more than you love me. Oh, no, you don't, because I loved you first. Hallelujah. Thanks for chasing me. You're so welcome. I needed that. <laughs> Hallelujah. She romanced me right into a marriage relationship. Hallelujah. Thank you, baby. That's what Papa did for me. That's what the Lord Jesus did for you. Now, come on. Let's stir up ourselves with his righteous cause. Let's become overwhelmed with his divine purposes now. Let's go ahead and get, live the life that he's freely giving to us to live. He died for you. He died for me. Now I'm going to be willing to die for him. He first loved me. Now I'm going to love him. He bought me. I shall not be my own. He won me. He came and broke me out of prison. I had a very, a very close friend of mine, John, evangelist John Ward. And I told him one time, I said, if you ever get in jail, I'll come, I'll break you out of jail. I'll make sure, I'll break, I mean, no matter what it takes, I'll break you out of jail. He ended up in jail. I went and sold everything I had. I went and got every bit of money I could scrape together and not pay this bill. I got him out. Because I'm in covenant with him, and I was at a, as an age of 15 years of age, and still am today. Jesus did far more than that for you and me. He did far more than that for you and me. I'm not going to be my own man. 
I'm not going to live my own life. He bought me with his own blood. When Satan and things and circumstances start browbeating you and trying to make you look like nothing, trying to make you look like you defeated and that you don't count and that you're not valuable, you need to start considering and start worshiping and praising God for how God valued you at the price of his own blood. How he's given to you the most precious things that you can possibly ever imagine. I like to tell people this sometimes because it's very important. I was sitting in a room one day and there was in the room probably the mightiest men on the face of the earth at that day. The mightiest moving and representation of the moving of God was in that room on that day. And out came this huge, weighty, half-pound golden necklace and put the golden necklace on me. Then out came this custom-made Rolex gold watch with diamonds all around it and in it, and they put that on me. Then out came this huge, kingly golden ring. They put that on me. And I'm weighed down with this gold. And I said, my goodness, what are you doing, man? I said, I don't even, I said, this almost doesn't even seem right. In fact, this don't seem right at all. What's going on? And then the, the prophecy began to come forth. The word of the Lord began to come forth, come forth to me. And I heard it for every person upon the face of the earth that is willing to come sit down and give their life in complete surrender, in complete consecration to the will of the Father. How he comes and he puts upon us his royal garments and he decks us out with these costly things, these precious things, these ornaments of the sacred of the divine, that which is most precious to him. To go far beyond all riches, to go far beyond all gain, to go, go far beyond all that we are worthy of. How did I get here? What's happening to me? I just showed up to the meeting. How did I end up being escorted into this room? I just came seeking out and longing for those things for which I was apprehended in the gospel. I just came wandering into the place that I might lay hold of a greater dimension of the one who my heart longs for. And here I am escorted into this room. And all of this goldly, and, and, and all this gold and, and, and jewels and costly things being put on me. That's what Father does for me. I, I, I was blessed to be able to experience something of a tangible expression of it, but I'm going to tell you right now, far more than that was the spiritual expression of it and that which is available to you right now. God loves you so much. You're precious to him. You're valuable to him. You're sacred to him. What you can do, what God would do through you, rather, no one else can do. The influences that you have, no one else can have. You will have influence for good or for bad, for blessings or for cursings. Let them all be good and let them all be for blessings. Let God anoint you with his presence and with his power. Let him clothe you with his mighty authority. Watch what happens. Watch what happens. Watch what happens. Richard Moore came here a couple of months ago and I took Richard over into the other building. He comes so under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, he's out there dancing around, man, just, he's just beside himself. Power of God, the glory of God. I brought him over here and he went to a whole other level. You know, he was, in a, he was in a Holy Ghost meeting and we were just out, I was out there breathing dust, but I could feel the anointing. You know, I'm already seen it. I've been seeing it for a while. His first time he's seen it. And it was Richard Moore, I was on the phone, I was scolding him about not being willing to go to Nepal. I was out, what we say, scooping poop for the horses, cleaning out the horse pens. Spirit of the Lord says, you going. Spirit of the Lord told me I was going. They're out there, uh, leaning up against the manure rake, scolding Richard Moore. I was telling him, you got to be kidding me. you thinking about going. You've been invited and you thinking about going. What's wrong with you, man? The doors of this nation has been closed. Finally, it's open for the first time 
in, 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 in all known history, and you're thinking about going, and I'm just letting them have it. And the Spirit of the Lord says, no, you're going. <laughs> and so I get silent. I'm saying nothing because the Spirit of the Lord said, no, you're going. Look at the unlikely place. The most unlikely place. I wasn't fasting and praying and hearing this. I was rebuking another brother while I'm busy cleaning at the horse pen. This is what God is going to grab a hold of you when you don't even, can't even begin to imagine. All you got to do is be faithful to him. All you got to do is hunger. All you got to do is thirst. All you got to do is long for these things. And God, all you got to do is stand, be planted here. Don't move. And Richard's going on telling me, you know, because I'm silent now. I'm overwhelmed by the presence of God. He's all going on telling me, saying, yeah, you're right, brother. You know, I should go ahead and tell him that I'm going to come. He's going on and on and on. And he, said, and he says, are you still there? I said, yeah. He said, what's wrong? I said, I think I'm going. <laughs> I go back to my house. I'm stunned. I'm stunned all night. The next morning, a assemblies of God preacher that has never come to my house comes into my house knocking on my door. I said, hey, how are you doing? I said, what are you doing here? He said, I just felt like coming over to your house. I said, he said, what's wrong? Because I'm standing there looking stunned. I said, man, I think I'm going to Nepal. I just barely even knew where Nepal was just the other day. <laughs> he said, you are? I know somebody in Nepal. And that is Sudeep Kadka, who's become a dear friend of ours. What God would do, he sets it all up. You don't know. He's setting it all up. He set all these things in place long ago. There was plenty of opportunities to get mad and violate relationship with that brother. Plenty of bad things that happened. But I, I walked straight with God, obeyed God. I did what was right. I laid my life down. I kept on loving. I kept on blessing. Because it was part of what God would do to connect the dots for what he was about to do through my life. You listen to me. I'm talking to you. I'm talking about that there is no experience and there is no decisions that you make that are just minor ones. Every one are major ones. Everything's setting you up. I've been praying a lot for you. You've been on my mind and my heart. God purpose to set you up. You've got all things. It's got everything all laid out for you, man. It's been laid out, it's been laid out for you. Sometimes when things laid out for you, the Lord doesn't allow us to tell you. Because he's purposed that you should discover it through relationship because if we tell you it's ahead of time. And it may ruin you. Because you, you know ahead of time, you may try to ultimately bring it to pass through your own human ability and you'll mess it all up. You'll get an Ishmael instead of an Isaac. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Watch what's happening, people. Okay, all I, can just, all I can tell you tonight is just good news. It's good news. It's great things. I'm just telling you, God's plans for everybody in here are amazing. Hey, over the top, I guarantee you. It's like the former things cannot be remembered anymore. The challenges that many people were going through that are not here today, that we had to plead and cry out with the earnestness of everything we knew in God, screaming out to them to not make those decisions that they would be detrimental to their spiritual life. Those things are gone. They're over. They're done. Decisions have been made. It's a new chapter. It's all been sorted out. A whole new beginning in God is where we stand right now, an opportunity to move forward. It doesn't matter where you've been, how you've responded up to this point. Right now, where you're at, at this very moment, God has given you the capacity to fully receive everything that he's about to do through you. And all you've got to do is participate with him and let it be born in prayer like his birth with every other man. George Whitfield did lots of things. God called, he, he, he had a relationship with God where he spoke and God answered. But the man was a man noted for being continually upon his knees in prayer. to where that his knees were flattened out like, and it's described to be like the knees of a camel. They spent so much time upon them. I know other men like that. I knew, I, I, I'm praying right now for my dear brother Yun, 
who will be here in October because God's got a whole other dimension for him. And things have healed him back, not by his own choosing, really. It's been things, circumstances around him, but he and I both know he is about to be released into a fiery anointing that he himself has and been restrained from just out of honoring those around him. I'll say no more than that. But I'm telling you, God is raising up people out of obscurity right now. Everybody knows it. Everybody's looking around because we know, we feel it, we sense it. Everybody's in agreement with this thing. That a great awakening is about to take place. That people who've been in obscurity as we're living in caves and, and hid out, hidden away, about to shine like the brightness of the noonday sun because they're going to stand up in Jesus. Don't let discouragement have any place in your life anymore. It's going to come at you. Count it as an enemy, not as a familiar friend. Various different kinds of trouble where you feel like people don't like you or there's relationship issues or there's tension. Bend not to it. Bend not to it. But move forward as though everything is perfect. Bend, go forward as though everything. Refuse to see the wrong and only see the right. Refuse, refuse to be swayed. Refuse to be swayed by any other ideas. Um, the imagination is the most vain realm. The imagination is the most vain realm. It's the place where Satan plays his games to create things that do not exist to destroy your opportunity to live big for God. Cast it down. Walk in love, walk in humility, walk in truth, believe the good, hold on to those things that are honorable. Hallelujah. Let God work it out. Don't take it into your own work, hands. Put your trust in the Lord. Be willing to put all your confidence in Him. Father, do that which is in, impossible for men to do. Hallelujah. Sukuna nasi ikilimakai ikina sukuti. Ishiporanai. Profile. Sereste. You ready for some great things? Absolutely. And God? You ready to have everything added to you? Namasaki, namasalaya, right? The Father is purpose that you've been longing for, waiting for. Thank you, Father. Amen. Well, revivals come to you. Hallelujah. Revivals come to you. Masaki Bratai. Ming Dastabe. Getting right back in the right place on the right path at the right time in Jesus' mighty name. Full regroup. Amen. Reset. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Like I say, I want everybody to stand with me, please. Just change your position. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hu 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 ra. Siku ramon kundai li kashilobo usi. Iritar nombro si preticara. Li kana no si bruto si yera. Li li lodo subi ala la si re kaya li ki prusitara. Si re si namaka. Just pray in the Holy Ghost with me for a little bit. Braso koronea. That's it. She karama satay in his. Si breve ba breve ba mama katia shalalala bahata. Hallelujah. Si breve karama mama breve kiri di andalala basuta. Ha ha ha. Passo torre mengila pramaina. Se pornande prete. Ha ha. Si caradain mo si prebe cara si arre he ha ha Eh vada mondo de dei Eh la mambala va sa de dei So remind that's it that's it Bora vada ma sebre ma mana Il rebe casa lo lo mamba rebe costo Thank you Father for this cry of the Holy Ghost Coming up out of our innermost being Thank you, Father, for this thunderous shout that you place within our lives, O oh God. 
Thank you, Father, for this ordained time and moment of time that your great power, that your great anointing might be manifested in the earth. Thank you, Father, for the production of great faith within the life of your people here in this place that nothing will be able to stop them. That the gates of hell would not be able to prevail against them. But with power and authority, they tread upon scorpions and serpents and over all the power of the enemy and nothing can by any means hurt them. Father, that every person and every soul in this place rises with such miracle anointing that these signs follow them in your name. That such authority in their lives, such an experience of relationship, such an encounter with you results in your divine outworking in every dimension of the things that they say and do. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you for this rushing mighty wind. Thank you, Father. Thank you for these clothing tongues of fire. Thank you, Lord God, for this great outpouring of the Holy Ghost. <coughs> Jesus' name. will be overwhelmed with your manifest presence. That every person in this place will know and come to know how to begin to interact with you and talk with you and converse with you and build themselves up in their most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost until they're overshadowed, overwhelmed with your presence on a daily basis to where that every dimension of their life becomes an expression of your divine majesty and glory and they live for nothing else. Father, we thank you that the days, the former days are over, the things that Satan was able to do to hinder and stop and prevent, that those days are done. Yes, that, yeah, there will be challenges still, but they will be different ones. Father, that every person in this place begins to move by the sound of your voice, captivated by your manifest presence, overwhelmed and moved by your love and compassion for a lost and dying world. Every person in this place takes upon their own life the responsibility, the personal responsibility to see change in the earth to speak to the highest realms of government first on their knees, to speak to the highest realm of principality of power as they lay hold in crying out and petition and supplication in the Spirit, then to speak in person to those authorities as you bring them before great men, leaders of nations, Father, we thank you for these things that you're doing. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that every person in this place will just be willing to believe and give themselves continually to the work. Listen, you listen to me. If God has given you a gift, if you have any anointing at all, you need to give yourself completely over to it so that the development of that which God has given you might come to its full perfection in his presence by his spirit so that he may also give you more things as well put god first put the things of the kingdom of god first let darkness let poverty of spirit and material things no longer have sway in your life and of course, when I'm talking about poverty of spirit, I'm talking about having a lack of the spiritual manifestation of the things of the spirit, which God has richly and liberally supplied to all.
Just begin to pour your heart and your life out upon him. Many times, listen, many times, and, and this, I'm going to say this about me, and I, I'm going to say this about everybody that I know that's doing anything in the kingdom of God, and, and you could say this about you if, if things have been advancing in your life. There's been many places and, uh, and opportunities for me to choose other things that would have brought personal gain and ease and comfort to myself, and I said no. No. No, I want everything that God, I want to do it bigger than that. I want to do everything that God wants me to do. I want to lay down my life. I want to give it all to Him. I want only His fire. I want only His work in my life. I give my life to do what He's called us to go and do. What is it that you have in your hand right now? What is it that you have in your hand right now? What is it that God has made available to you that you know you have right now? Do you know that you have an anointing to pray? Well, that's power. Then go ahead and give yourself to it. Do you have, maybe you have the anointing to play an instrument, or maybe you have the anointing to move in worship and praise and thanksgiving. Do it. Give your whole self to it. Maybe you have a hunger to be used by God in the realms of healing or miracles. God put that hunger on the inside of you. Give yourself to it. Apply yourself to those things in the spirit. I know what, I know what uh, Tim Hall did as a young man. He started studying every miracle of the Lord Jesus Christ. You're not going to trip him up on one single miracle. He can describe every one of them to you in detail because he studied them until he captured them. He studied them in great detail because he was great, so hungry for it. Just give yourself to those things. What God has placed upon your heart, give yourself to them. Father, Father will bring them to pass in your life. If you hunger for these things, that they're more important to you than anything else, you're going to give yourself, you're going to apply yourself. Watch what the Lord will do. Above everything else, I'm, above everything else, there's two very important things to us. It is reaching the lost, seeing the lost have a divine encounter. Listen, just, I'm going I'm to have you understand something. I do not want, I mean, the, the, this dear, the dear lady that Brit, Brittany, the dear young woman that Brittany brought this morning, she come up, she said, you're, you're ma I thought she said, you're making me sad. She said, you're making me shake. Uh, of course, I wasn't making her shake. It was the presence of the Lord making her shake. I don't want to go to any person that's lost in, a, in, in darkness and just give them a spiel. I want them to feel the divine presence of the living God. I'm going to go with a power to, that they have an encounter. That's what God said. He said, you can't be my witness until you do the power from on high. There's a lot of people, there's a number of people in this place right now. You're filled with the word of God. You, you, feel, you know the word of God, but you've never been baptized in the fire. You've never been baptized in fire. That's why you don't go. That's why you held back. That's why you set back. That's why you're intimidated. That's why you can't move forward. That's why you're overwhelmed by the impossible circumstances. You have to have an encounter. Somebody said, well, I speak in tongues. You've not been baptized in fire. I don't care what you do. I don't care. You've not been baptized in fire. The expression of baptism in fire. Yeah, tongues is an initial expression of it. But the expression, the bigger expression of baptized in fire is going with power and authority to the lost. Seeing the lost touched with the encounter of heaven. It's true. I'm giving you some things not to be sad and sorry about, but to be hungry and thirsty about. Hallelujah. I'm giving you some things to cry out to God about, not to be silent about. People get overwhelmed because they look at themselves. It's rather have a, a moment of revelation, turn and look at Jesus and go, oh. Ah, sovereign Lord. Hallelujah. Ah, I might be a little bit slow on the learning process when it comes to things of the Spirit, but ah, the light just came on. Praise God. And Father has made it just about this hard. Ask. 
But he's asking us to ask with a, a desperation. He's asking us to ask with a hunger. He's asking us, he's, he's wanting us to get to the place of, oh my goodness, I'm desperately in need. That's a moment of reality. He wants us to come to that place. God brings us to this place of desperation. And he's right there. He's right there to respond to our cry. I do not see anybody in here tonight. I'm looking very hard. I do not see anybody in here tonight that God has excluded. I do not see anybody in here tonight that the Lord has left out. He said, no, no, they can't be a part. I, no, everyone in here, Father, is desperate about you being a part of this great outpouring, this great moving. I don't want to be known as the generation in which all everything went down the drain. <laughs> I don't want to be known as the generation in which Satan had his, had his will and way and overcame the world, as it were. Overcame the church, rather, as it were. I want to be a part of that generation that restores and turns everything back. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Just raise your hands. Lift your hands towards heaven. Hallelujah. Karasatara Nash. Thank you, Jesus. 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 That's right. Just go ahead and pour out your affection, your heart. Pour out your affections to him right now. Just go ahead and pour out your affections to him right now. Just go ahead and pour out your affections to him. I want to pray for anyone here tonight. You have pain in your body, especially the, anybody who's dealing with any kind of kidney pain. Any pain. Any kind of, any kind of pain in your body, any kind of... Pain in your ovaries, I want you to come right now. Pain in your kidneys, pain in your ovaries, pain in your, in your organs that are located, most you can feel them towards your back. Because the Lord Jesus is going to heal you tonight. There's a miracle in the house. Faith, come over here. You know what, the Spirit of the Lord has been talking to a lot to me about you and the meaning and the value of your life and what he's ordained you to do and to be in Satan of course he comes along and he tries to nullify all of that and make you think that you don't have any value and you don't have any meaning you don't have any purpose but here's a great thing that's happening right now father is going to intervene he's intervening already he's giving you divine purpose and authority you're going to know who you are you're not going to need to have that validated. And when you know who you are, you can be who God's called you to be. When you know who you are in Christ Jesus, that's what I'm, of course, that's what I'm speaking of. And these things that afflicted and tormented your body, they cured. As you obey God, move out in the things of the Spirit, you see. So the, th the things that have tried to hold you back in the realms of the spirit have just had a manifestation out working in your body and it's not going to be you're not living under that oppression you're not living under that curse you're not living under that heaviness you're not living under that torment anymore that doesn't what's happened in your life in the past does not define you nothing about that defines you nothing earthly defines you because you're defined only in Christ Jesus you're defined only in the realms of heaven Father, I thank you for this special anointing that you placed upon faith from birth as you knitted her together in the womb of her mother. Faith! Faith! The glory of Jesus Christ. And that pain goes out of your body right now in Jesus' name. That affliction, that torment leaves off its hold. Leaves off. Let's, let's go of you right now in Jesus' name. I smash it in Jesus' name. I bring it to an end, the finality in Jesus' name. You rise up and you take your place among those who stand around the throne. 
The Lord said, keep my charge. God said, keep my charge. And I'll give you a place to stand among all these mighty ones who stand around me. Keeping his charge. He's charged us to be endued with power from on high and to go everywhere preaching this gospel just like he preached it. I'm telling you, Faith, you will find that your life is just beginning. I'm telling you, Satan's tried to lie to you and say it's over. There's no reason to living. And Father's showing you everything that you're going to live for, not only now, but through the eternity that he's planned out for you. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you right now, the people that I know who God has purposed to use the most live sometimes under the greatest intense persecution of anyone else, physically and spiritually. It doesn't mean to say that the Lord has a purpose to use everybody, but there are special callings upon people's life. And Satan comes out with everything he can do to stop any calling being expressed on anybody's life. And it's a great moment of revelation when you realize what's going on around here. And you don't let the enemy stop you anymore, defeat you anymore. You don't listen to his lies. Because you'll be right at the moment of visitation and Satan will come at you with every intimidation that will cause you to run out the place. I'm telling you. That will cause you to imagine that everybody's against you, that no one's for you, that everybody hates you, that no one loves you, that everybody's wrong and you're the only one right. Flee! And you believe it's God because he comes as an angel of light to stop your encounter. Say encounter. encounter. Say encounter. encounter. That's the reign of his presence. That's the reign of his presence that brings forth the fruit, that brings forth the divine ability within your life that allows you to do things that you cannot do without it. You cannot do these things without the working of the power of the Holy Ghost in your life. You cannot have that working the power of the Holy Ghost in your life without an encounter with him. And it begins with the new birth and it continues on that way. Have you begun in the spirit to now be made perfect by the flesh? No, you began in the spirit to now be made perfect by the spirit. From one encounter to the next encounter to the next, to be born of God, to be able to receive the things of the Spirit through an encounter now to be used by God by an encounter to be used in a greater way by an encounter to come into the full maturation of all that God has purposed for you by yet another encounter. It's called a relationship. Hallelujah. She called him most Italian. Oh, I want every one of you, I'm just blessed God brought a new friend, a covenant friend. It's as though, you know, he's just texting me today and I feel the same way. And I believe he's watching right now. His name is Pat. And God, what's Pat's last name? Shetzlin. 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 God's using Pat Shetzlin in an, in an amazing way. And he says, it's like, you know, we've known each other all of our life, just covenant friends immediately. It's just a divine connection. He just wrote, wrote a book called I Am Remnant. And I want you to read it. I Am Remnant. He says the remnant is the rag that God uses to clean up the mess. It's that leftovers that didn't fit into the plans of man. And, I, and, and, and Pat's getting ready to come here. He's, getting ready, he's just getting ready to be more a part of, a, of the ministry here. And, and, and God, like I said, God used him all over the world. And he, he told me, he, just, he, he texted me a little bit ago. He said, man, your, your article on alcohol in the church, he said, I just sent it all over the world. And he said, hey, everybody that I know in leadership throughout the world, they're sharing it and it's going even further. And I said, I'm, you know, he said, is that okay? I said, look, man, I'm honored. Praise God, you know, come on. I mean, now we're going to call on you. Come help us now. In every way we can help you, we're going to help you in every way. Huh? And we're going to pull on you to help us in every way you're willing to help us. Because we're going to pull together and it's saying, I love the diversity of expressions. I love the diversity of expressions. Hallelujah. Hamasukeretaya. And then as we join hands in this great diversity of anointing that God has brought into our lives, the things that God has given us individually uh, just spreads out and we begin to collect everything that God has done individually and it all becomes a part of our life singularly, you know, <laughs> collectively. You know, we all receive from one another. It's a beautiful, wonderful realm. I'm ready to take the city. I'm getting ready to, in the very near future to start a church called Church of Klamath Falls. 
and we got it all laid out. We begin to God give us a plan and begin to lay it out. But you know what? We're gonna do we're gonna do it here in San Diego. We're gonna see it done here in San Diego. The Lord's given His plan to start it to church in Klamath, and and the church of Klamath Falls has started with started the beginning with three to four hundred people. We're gonna see it happen. God's already doing it. He's been putting it together. But we're gonna see a breakthrough in the stronghold of Southern California. We're not gonna stop. We're not gonna stop. So are you planning a church over there and you're gonna leave? No. No. We're gonna plant a church all over the place. We're gonna go into all the world and preach the gospel. We're gonna do it and still be here. And if we need to be translated, Father, give us the full moment in time that we need to be translated. Father will supply the ability. Amen. Amen. Until that time, we'll fly around. Hallelujah. We're getting ready to go ahead and, you know, I don't know if I wanted to crawl into an airplane with any other pilot, so I decided to get my own pilot's license. <laughs> I'm going to get Ruth Anna to get a pilot's license because I'm getting, a, I'm getting, that woman is a woman of the spirit. She's a woman of faith. She can drive me anywhere, any, in, 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 whether on land or in the air. I, I entrust myself to her. So she's going to go with me. She's going to get her pilot's license too so we can fly around. Then when we can't get, when flying around can't get us to every place we need to go, we get translated. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hudastara neyati. Sukamagalea nikasaya. Havravekatiya. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I am so blessed the things I'm hearing in my spirit. I heard the other night. I was, I, where was I? I was in D.C. Uh, I was in, I was in, it was a Thursday night. And I heard in the spirit. Head has been a strong champion for the things that she believes in. She's not going to fake nothing. She's going to tell you what she feels. She's not going to pretend. Everybody knows that about her probably. <laughs> You don't have to wonder what she's thinking. And the Spirit of the Lord says she's going to become a strong contender for what I think. She's going to be bold for what I believe in. It's happening. I'm so blessed. And I command that pain go out of your body right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. All nine gifts of the Spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was going around for a while, you know, visiting people and just asking them, you know, going to their house and asking them, you know, what they felt God was doing in their life, what, what was stirring in their heart, what gifts of the Spirit were they coveting, what did they believe in God to do to them, and, you know, whether it was miracles, signs and wonders, prophetic gifts, whatever it was. I'd go over and spend some time with, with Amy and, and Brad, and, and Amy said, well, can you have all nine, nine gifts? I said, absolutely. And she's going to do that. Watch what happens. She's going to do that. You're going to step into that. Amy, come here. You're going to step into it. Amy. There have been a lot of challenges between then and now. There's been some fiery furnaces. There's been some trials. Fiery trials. But it's all just preparing you to step over and to see God do it bigger than you ever thought it could possibly be. Yeah. To where the, his appointment is far greater than all disappointment. His blessings far greater than any robbery or any curses or anything that's taken from you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Or you thought was taken from you. <laughs> yeah. Amen. I'm going to give you something right now. <laughs> Freely I have received. Freely I give everything God gave to me. I give to you right now. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Habakusha na mangeya teya. Ha ha. Malatane. Mangadeya siatina. Ha 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 ha. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the anointing. Lord, here's a woman who's willing. Lord, here's a woman who's willing to live fully for you, who doesn't want to walk around in their own glory. 
It doesn't want to walk around in their own purposes. But it wants want, 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 wants wants walk, wants walk, wants walk, is to pay, wants to fall to say, wants to take, and he could equal those to talk. And it wants to tell you. Is the cone of mine wants to tear the name. Walk a shang lake cake, look shang lake coat shock lock day. She in a kina cook it stuck in the maki look at time. It's the Roma in your purposes, Lord. In your purposes. The fire of God runs right through you. Drives out the pain. Drives out the pain and sorrow in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You know, the Lord said, those who hold, out the, hold the office of the deacon purchase for themselves great boldness in the faith. And I want you to understand, deacon is a word that we use for servant. I want you to understand, God, if you're willing to serve the Lord Jesus Christ with what you have, if you're willing to serve him with your, your time, with your life, with your substance, if you're willing to pour in your heart to serve in the things of the church, you purchase for yourself great boldness in the faith. If I could describe great boldness in the faith, I would describe it like this. It shall only rain at my word. That's great boldness in the faith. To know that what you say, Father is going to do. What you command, he will bring to pass. What you laid hold of is yours to have. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody said to me the other day, they said, wow. Said, your daughter-in-law, she's really doing amazing in that business. I said, yeah. One night she was sitting in the meeting and I was ministering just a little bit on the gift of faith and she reached out and she grabbed it. Somebody said, how could she grab it so easily? Because she loves so completely. Because she reverences and respects. Absolutely. That makes it easy to have whatever has been made available. Because people, you understand, God has a framework of connection with that which he pours out. And it's the ministries that he's brought into your life. It's the relationship and ministries that he's brought in your life. You can't move forward. When God doesn't bring somebody in your life by accident. It was his divine design. And that's an accident going on around here. It's his divine plan and his divine appointment. And you cannot circumvent it. You didn't make it happen. You, you ended up there. God planned it. He purposed it. You can't go around it. You can't go up any other way. You can't circumvent it. You've got to connect with it. And when you connect with it properly in covenant love, and I'm going to tell you, there's always lots of challenges against covenant love. Believe me. There's lots of opposition. That's why I'm... Most people don't have relationships very long. A lot of people don't stay in churches as very long either. But it's different around here. That's why people don't stay in marriages very long. Children suffer the consequences of it. There's other reasons, but primarily that is the foremost reason. There are reasons of deceit. There are reasons of other things. You know what I'm saying to you here tonight. When you make that proper connection, when you honor that which Father has brought into your life, then that which comes from the head, supply, the supply of that which comes from the head will flow to you. Disconnect the pipe, and it's going to pour out on the ground. You listen to me? When I hear the Spirit of the Lord say, you were born for such a, you brought into the world for such a time as this, but if you refuse, if you refuse to lay down your life, if you refuse to do it, God should raise up his deliverance from somewhere else. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. I'm not going to get there on that day and say, I was planning on doing that through you, but you opted out. No. I couldn't live with that. Could you live with that? watching somebody else moving in the greatness of God while you're sitting at home on the couch watching him on TV because you opted out? No, sir. Nuh-uh. Oh, not going to happen. No. No, I'm not going to stand by and let it happen either in Jesus' name.
I was talking to the Lord about how the stadiums of Japan would be filled with the people of Japan. I said, well, you know, they all love golf and they all love baseball. And the Lord gave me right connections with the golf guys and the baseball guys. And the Lord said, no, I'm going to do it a different way. I'm going to do it with my own signs and wonders and power and demonstration. See, for me, I honor what everybody else is doing. But you know what God has placed on my heart to do? I know that as soon as I walk up in the realms of the anointing, that God wants to bring me into to the person who's walking down the street with the blind person's cane and I say in Jesus name receive your sight and they receive their sight crowds are going to start coming Amen. yes yes Amen. it will when it comes to that level when when the when the doing the baby sitting there this with that is born without the ability to think properly they born paralyzed listen to me how many diseases did that baby have that baby have that they brought to Mariah Woodworth at her? Huh? Everything. The, the baby was blind. The baby was deaf. Mm -hmm. The baby did not, mind was, was not operating. The baby was paralyzed. The baby had a blood disease. The baby was 10 years old, six years old. They brought the baby to Mariah Woodworth at her. She took hold of the baby. She held the baby, and the baby was completely made whole, saw, heard, walked, and mind was completely bright and normal as any other mind. It was also mute. The baby also spoke all right there instantaneously. No wonder she had huge meetings. No wonder many people came into the kingdom of God because there was a relationship going on that had been developed where she asked, she called, and Father answered. She she prayed, she asked whatever she would, and Father did it. That's what we're going to do. See, that's what's in my heart. Listen, I don't put this on anybody else. This is not placed on anyone. This is on me. It's placed on you because you're around me. It's placed on you. A lot of people come and they got to go somewhere else because it's too much for them because I'm always talking about you're going to do these works and greater works. That's me. I'm always talking about you got one of two choices. You can come into the fullness of the measure and maturity of the ministry of Jesus, or you can be like a child tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. It's your choice, which you're going to go with A or B. <laughs> and I don't persuade you to go with A because that's what God's placed on me. And I love everybody else, and I don't put anybody else down because everybody's got their thing that God has called them to do, their mandate in heaven. But watch what happens. Watch what God's going to do. Watch what God's going to do. Watch what God's going to do. I tell you, I love Japan. I love the Japanese people. I love the Japanese people so much. I, my cattle are Japanese. My livestock are Japanese. I'm telling you, I love everything about Japan. Japan, Japan will rise up in the greatness of the kingdom of God, and Japan will be a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 I see the day coming where the imperial palace will be mowed down and become a park. Amen. That's right. That's right. There was a day where it could have been completely eliminated and wiped off the face of the earth. It was all in the hands of the decision of our supreme generals and, and, and commanders of the war. And they opted to go and just leave it intact. They should have burned it to the ground. They should have decimated it and brought the bulldozers in it and made a park right then and there. They had the power to do it. That's my, that's my take on history. That's what God would have willed. Amen. Amen. That's what I believe. I believe with all my heart. Well, it's going to happen anyway, so Father's will will be done. It's just going to happen in a more, in a more gracious and, and willing way. They're going to do it themselves and not anyone else going to do it, which is a better way. That's probably Father's way anyways. Okay? So I'll backpedal a little bit. Is that Okay. Can God correct me while I'm talking? Sure. Huh? Uh, Do you have any problem with that? And I start spouting off something that I don't know anything about. He's not bother interrupts me. That's no. That's that ain't it. Wow. It's a good thing dialoguing with Father. Huh? It is. Hallelujah. He corrects every part of your speech. You don't have to wait till you get home. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Tomorrow, tomorrow morning, I, I want just all I want you to do is just wake up in the morning and I want you to greet the Holy Ghost. 
I want you to tell him he's looking for you to voluntarily ask him. He doesn't want you to take him for granted. He's sacred. Don't take him for granted. Say, Holy Spirit, I recognize that you're here. Even if you don't recognize that he's here. Just go ahead and start moving out in faith. Maybe you have to say, if you just want to try to be that much more honest, say, Lord, I don't recognize you're here, but I want to. <laughs> now you're talking to yourself. Because just the very thing that you're moving in the Word of God, the Word of God tells you, describes to you that He's there and He's present with you. So go ahead and move in the Word of God and recognize that He's there. Say, Holy Ghost, I recognize you, that you're here. If it's nothing but according to His Word, I recognize that you're here according to Your Word. I can literally get up in the morning and say, Holy Spirit, I recognize that you're here because I do recognize that He's here. I feel Him. I, he's with me. I've moved into that relationship. Did I have that at the beginning? No, I have it now. I've matured into it. I've grown into it. You get to mature into this and grow into this, but start it now. Don't wait till later to find this out. Get up in the morning, tell the Spirit, I recognize that you're here, and I give you the place of complete mastery over my life. I don't want to do anything that you don't want me to do. I want to be led into everything that you purpose for me to do. I'll say anything, I'll do anything, I'll go anywhere that you want me to go. I don't want my own plans. I want your plans. Rule over me, master me, master. Talk to your dog to him like that. You begin to lay the foundation of your life to hear him talk to you back, to talk back to you. Are you with me? Wouldn't it be terrible if I got up in the morning, you know, and I never said anything to my wife? I just never even looked at her, never looked at her in her eyes, just walked right on past her, did all of my stuff. She's looking at me. She's waiting, willing to wait on me hand and foot. She's just waiting for me to just acknowledge her. She's just wanting me to come over there and hug her. And I just keep walking around, doing all my stuff, grabbing my things, and I'm headed out the door. I don't even say goodbye. Don't say hello. Don't say good morning. Don't say I love you. Don't say nothing. That's going to hurt. And you do that day in, day out. How then are you creating a relationship? How you lay a foundation relationship that way? You don't. See, what happens is we forsake to do the most simplest things, the most obvious things, the most immediate things, waiting for something else. No, 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 no. Start at the beginning. Start right here at the beginning. The word is the beginning. Start right here at the beginning. Start here at the beginnings of relationship. Reach out there and want to take a hold of the Holy Ghost to, so that you might agree with him. Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. You get in your car, you start doing this. You get in your car, you start doing this. You start maturing this. I'm going to tell you right now, it will come to a place. Listen, do you almost have to, there's times I almost have to, I'm an, honestly, there's times I almost have to pull off to the road because I'm being overwhelmed with the boss of the Lord. I'm being overwhelmed with the glory of God. I'm being raptured. I think I'm leaving my body with the goodness and the presence of God. Hallelujah. With the sweetness of his of his goodness do it do it father will not i'm not in any way i don't want to in any way minimize the relationship you have with the lord right now i'm inviting you into a maturation where it will grow and it will mature and it'll be greater and more glorious than anything you have right now this is his invitation this is his invitation. This is his invitation. Can you see all of Japan saved? Can you see all of Japan lit up with the fire and the glory of God? Can you see Japan filled with the presence of Jesus Christ? Where the darkness and the sorcery and the evil that has overwhelmed that nation no longer binds it? I can't. I see it. I see it. What's going on, dear? Where's the pain at? That angle's still acting up on you. Is that the one you hurt, or is this another one? No, two months ago, I injured it really bad. So. And what did you do to it? I was running a 5K, and I fell on the curb. And so what's going on now? Just, just in pain? Um, or does it keep turning out on you? No, it's just a little bit. Father, I thank you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit that you put on your daughter, Christina. Father, I thank you that the identity which you have given her and you will be so fully embraced that every other thing and every idea and every imagination will find no place to in any way oppress her, afflict her, or torment her. 
Above Father, she read that she rises up in divine power and glory and gives herself from this day forward to the work of the ministry to the things of the Spirit. So there's room for nothing else in her life. Now I command you to be healed in Jesus' name. I command the pain to go out of your body and your ankle to work normal in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Your ankle works normal in Jesus' mighty name. Prokasaya. Prokaritaya. Ezulamangeya sutaya. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Is there anyone else in here with a need, spiritual need, a physical need, financial need? Is there anyone else in here you're struggling with uncertainties and doubts and fears? Tonight, let God bring them to an end. Let Jesus become the all-sufficient one for you. Let God become the provider of all that you have need of. Is there anybody concerned about their growth and the maturity? Let him this day from now on be your perfecter. Hallelujah. Is there anybody here today, tonight, you're concerned about the future, you're concerned about your life and your security? Let God Almighty be your protector. Put your trust fully in Him. And all the fears and all the insecurities and all the situations that will come try to overwhelm you. You'll just throw them off as nothing. They'll, be, they'll, they'll fall before you. As powerless enemies. Father is here to touch you right now with His presence. Father is here right now to fill you with a hunger and a thirsting after the things of the kingdom of God where you become so desperate for an encounter with God that everything changes. I'm talking about an encounter with God. I heard another, a man describe it the other night and he said, if an elephant steps on you, you'll know that an elephant has stepped on you. You won't come back and say, I think an elephant stepped on me. <laughs> if you came back and said, I think an elephant stepped on me, an elephant did not step on you. Same way goes with an encounter. I think I might have had an encounter. If you think you might have had an encounter, it's just the same as thinking that an elephant might have stepped on you. It did not happen. When you have an encounter with God, you know everything changes. That which you, you're not able to look. When Paul prayed this and he said, I pray that the Father will count you worthy and fulfill the good pleasure of his will in you with the work of faith and power we come to know and understand that it is a grace and an act of god's own goodness that results in you and i being able to do that which he has commanded he's made that available to us through an encounter with him because you're hungry because you're thirsty tonight once again I'm telling you, I'm proclaiming to you, those of you who have been oppressed, a yoke has been around about your neck, and you've been moved by circumstances, and you've been moved by demon influences, I smash that thing. I chop that thing off of you. Break it in Jesus' name. But nothing will be able to replace a hunger and a thirsting after righteousness in your life. Nothing will be able to prevent a passionate pursuit of the will of God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. The Lord, he said this, he said, I provide all that you have need of according to my riches and glory. Now you just need to leave it there. See, you know what the worst thing is about any kind of sin or disobedience? You know what the worst thing about it is? It opens up a door for Satan to be able to persecute you more and afflict you with the lies that God don't care. That he's not going to provide for you. He's not going to take care of you. He's not going to do what he said. Oh, but to stand over here in this place of relationship with him, to stand over in this place of his mercy and his forgiveness, to where instantaneously, no matter what's going on, you just get reestablished right over here in this loving interaction with the Master. Oh, Hallelujah. Just lift your hands towards heaven. 
lift your hands towards heaven. The Spirit of the Lord is going to come touch you. He's going to supply all that you have need of. You know what? You're going to begin to lead like never before. Yep. Yes. You're going to begin to lead in the realms of the Spirit like never before. The mantle of the Holy Ghost to be able to lead, to grab a hold passionately of the things of the Spirit, to call those things which God said is done, done. To begin to bravely and boldly believe all that God has spoken, to move out in the faith of it is happening right now. It's happening right now. Because Father's setting you up for a passion and a desperation within your life to where that you can't be satisfied with anything less than a divine encounter of His presence and overwhelming outpouring of His Holy Ghost in your life and through your life. Now, right now, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, changed. Changed. Isatai. Changed. Boklai. Bolstakinakai. Estakina bota, sapakaya, sapakataya, lakatanasus. Huh? Yeah, I see it happening. I see you stepping into the divine purpose and calling of God for your life. kasataya. I see rivers of living water gushing out of your innermost being. Ishikara makstutino, erastikina mavatai. I see faith and the authority of faith being spoken, and all the doubt and all the insecurity gone forever. Every word of your mouth given to a confession of faith. Cheers right now. Cheers right now. Fushabaya. Ushabadanaya. Right out of your belly right now. Ishaboyara. Out of your belly right now. Receive the Holy Ghost. The expression of the of the of the things of the spirit. The tongues of fire. Right now, out of your belly, right now. Bokstakara membradesht. Mandam rumanda tayaleka shamba kuyateya. Lara stara nebe yateya. Ha. Malabangaya da da boshiganaya. There it is. There it is. Rambosa day. Bodasara. Elibelala. Ilibelala bala. Ilibelala da bala. Nida nige shega. Ilibelala bakala makilia la kalebatai. Libre vekiliana na mapala de yeti yeshi. Beradashate. Masute. Me. Mong rong jay lang bong jay le kana ne and jay bodora day. Mong jay jesus. Zura dora day yasi. Me ne abo. What is it that you have need of? Whatever you have need of, you just ask the Lord right now. He's going to give it to you. What is it that you want? What is it that you need? I found that I would rather have the word of wisdom than the word of knowledge. I mean, not to say that this, I'm not discrediting the word of knowledge in any way. I'm just saying I'd rather have the word of wisdom. The word of knowledge would tell people what they're doing, but the word of wisdom would show them how to do something different. The word of knowledge might tell people where they've been. But the word of wisdom will show them how to go where God's purpose for them to move and, and live and dwell. It'll get them out of their bad situation. The word of knowledge might tell them about their bad situation, but the word of wisdom will show them how to get into a good situation. It will change everything about their heart and their understanding, but how to cooperate with God. We pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, every one of you begin to walk in that word of wisdom. If any man lack it, God said, ask and he give it to you liberally. So right now, in the name of Jesus, lift your hands towards heaven. <laughs> now, you don't have to have boldness to walk in the word of wisdom. That's right. Because if you're too concerned about what people might think after you, of you after you get finished talking with them, you know what? You're going to be likely to tell them what they, you know they would be happy to hear. You understand what I'm saying? If, if people are too concerned about what people think of them, they're going to be probably more likely to tell people what they think that they're willing to hear and make them happy rather than give to them God's word of wisdom, God's answer for their need. And right now I pray in Jesus' name, just be filled up with boldness. <laughs> Leslie Faulkner of God. <laughs> Leslie Faulkner of the Spirit. Saint Leslie Faulkner. Hallelujah. Of the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name. Tonight before you leave, we want to just encourage you to worship the Lord with an offering. An offering that represents your heart. And, you know, if you even make it about bills and finances and things of that nature, it's far deeper than that. It's far greater than that. The offering, those things which are dear to you, 
things that represent your living, your livelihood, those things that represent your future. Has always been a part of worship. You might not understand this because you've never lived an agrarian life, but when the Lord asks for the most perfect, that the best of the flock, when you're, when you're concerned about the genetics of your herd, it's the best of the flock that is most important to you. That's your future. That's your best genetic lines. That's what you hold on to. That's what you retain. That's what's going to make the herd stronger in the end and more perfect and more reliable to give you the product you need. Father said, no, worship with me with that. And what you've got to understand is Father's goodness that when you begin to worship him with your best, he blesses everything. It's like Jacob defined to Laban. He defined to Laban to give to him what was Laban's throwaway. Laban's thinking, I thought, well, Jacob was smarter than that. He's asking me for the variance. He's asking me for the spotted and for the striped. God took what men thought was the worst and made the strongest and the best. Father put his blessing on it. Father put his blessing on it. Father will take your best, those things most precious to you, those things which are your future, those things that you worship him with, that are your livelihood. Huh? Even if it's two pence, it's not the bigness of the offering. It's the bigness of the heart in which it's given. That's why the woman who put in two pence gave more than everyone who gave of their, of their much. That they gave, they had plenty anyways. What they gave this really had no big impact on them. Always make your giving, the giving of your, of your finances. Somebody said, all you can take to heaven with you are sold. No, you can lay up treasure in heaven. Your giving can go on before you as well. God, Papa said so. Because I found out this, that where our heart is, everything else about our life is going to follow in that. That if we're willing to give of God, to God and, and, and trust to Him those things that we've come to rely upon for our daily living, that we're also going to give to Him of our time and we're going to give to Him of our trust in every dimension of our life. When He tells us to something to go do, we just go do it immediately, immediately. We don't try to think it through. You try to think it through, you're going to talk yourself out of it. When, you, when, when, that comes, when that gift of faith comes to you and, it's, and, it, and it blows into your spirit, you got to rise up and do it at all costs. you got to rise up and do it. Everybody can be saying, you're crazy, man. Don't do it. If you're going to do it, don't do it now. Do it later. No, no, no. But you got to just move out in it. Amen. So always make worship in the realms of giving a part of your everyday life. Make it a part of your everyday life. In some form or other. Even if it's just laying up something, just consecrating something to the Lord. Father, I want to be a part. For example, Lord, I want to be a part of what you're doing in Mongolia. And so I'm, ex I'm, I'm in expectation for you to bring supernatural finances into my hand so I can be part of the first mass evangelist crusade that ever took place in Mongolia. You know, we... We're planning on doing that at the end of this year. So many things are stacking up at the end of the year for me. <laughs> we start thinking about putting, pushing things into 2015. But the Lord has given us a mandate to go do things that has never been done in the nation before. Hallelujah. Praise God. If it's never been done in the nation before, that's what we're going to go do. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So we love you. We expect you. I expect to come here on, the, on next Sunday and see you with a whole nother countenance. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then, and, then, and then the next week after that, come back and see you yet with a whole nother countenance because you keep going from glory to glory. Hallelujah. You keep being strengthened more and more in the faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Sukura, Mama. 
So worship the Lord with your giving. Hug the people that are around you. Tell them that you love them. Bless them in Jesus' name. Give yourself to praying for them. Don't forget that we have prayer going on here every night of the week this week. Don't forget that we have Wednesday night service at 7 o'clock. Hallelujah. Come participate. Be a part of it. Watch what God will do as you join together with us, seeking Him. In Brazos, Tarenica, Rebatari.